sold out Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, 66,000 on hand to see the Penn State Nittany Lions 1-0 against the Iowa Hawkeyes 1-0. And it is the kind of afternoon on which college football was meant to be played. 62 degrees at kickoff. Wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now that will be going from left to right. Iowa has won the toss. They have elected to receive. They will be moving from right to left. So Penn State will have the wind in the first quarter. And of course we'll have the option to begin the second half of play. Massimo Manka will kick it off for Penn State. Back deep for Iowa on the near side, it is Robert Smith. And along with Robert Smith, it'll be Ronnie Harmon. There's Robert Smith. He has been quite an addition to the Iowa ball club. He's a sophomore. And last week against Iowa State, where the Hawkeyes scored 59 points, he had quite an afternoon catching three passes for one touchdown, but his average gain per catch was 36.6 yards. And there is Ronnie Harmon, a wing back a year ago. He's been moved to tailback. He averages 33.5 yards per kick return. So Massimo Manka will kick it off for Penn State. Penn State leads the series five games to three, but they have lost the last two in a row. Mank is kicked with the win. Smith, six yards deep in the end zone. He will take it there. Touchback. I will start first and ten from their own 20. So the onus certainly is on Penn State defense today, and we will get a look and see how they do. Today's officials, John Neal and the referee, Ed Hassel, Tom Ransom, Ed Marisich, and the rest of the crew. The Penn State defense from behind the goal they are defending. Chuck Long, the Iowa quarterback, is a junior, 6'4", 204 pounds. Last week, 10 out of 17, four touchdowns, one interception. Fullback, push across the 20 and out to the 24-yard line. Fred Bush, a junior, 6'1", 229 pounds. That was just a little bit of a cross, but they're going out of the huddle. Here's Owen Gill, cuts up the middle. He's hit and stopped for no gain. Rogers Alexander, knife through the hole. Nice defensive play. Gill lost perhaps a half yard. It'll bring up third down and six. Uh, Iowa's going with a quick huddle and two tight ends, something very unusual for them. Difficult for Penn State to get in the right defense they'd like to. Pitch wide, Gill. Gets a block, cuts up across the 25 and out to the 27, but that will be short of the first down. And so, Penn State holds Iowa on the first possession of the game. George, a little surprised that Iowa chose to run off. Yeah, because the win really doesn't make much difference to them. They have a nice short passing game, too. I think they're just testing Penn State to see if they can run a little bit to try to create some balance in their offense. Gary Kostrulaba to punt. Field to the 24, gets across the 30 and up to the 35 yard line. So a good punt by Castro Lava. A 44 yard kick and a seven yard return by Ray Isom. Isom was averaging four yards per punt return. A little better on that one. And so the Penn State offense will come to the line of scrimmage for the first time. Doug Strang at quarterback. Tony Mumford, the starting tailback. We do not expect to see D.J. Dozier at all today. Steve Smith at fullback. First down and 10. Strang to throw on first down to the far sideline. And it is incomplete. Over to Kevin Campbell. Campbell caught it, but landed out of bounds. That was a very dangerous throw, uh, Stan. He threw that to the wide side of the field. A quick out. That cornerback was pretty close, but it shows that Penn State is coming to prove that they have a better passing game than they had last week. You know, it's interesting about that, George. You throw an out pattern, you're on the near side hash mark, throw it all the way to the other sideline. That's a long way to throw the ball. Second down and 10, Penn State. Mumford. 
Cuts up, gets across the 35, out to the 37. It's a gain of one. It'll bring up third down and nine. Again, we do not expect to see D.J. Dozier at all today. He pulled a groin muscle against Rutgers a week ago. Mumford last week, 66 yards rushing, an average of only three per carry. He picked up one. Now, Iowa's operating from a 3-4 defense, and they'll jump the middle guard. That time, he jumped just in the right direction where the play was from. Third down and nine. Mumford on a wing right, wide out split to either side. Spray, deep over the sideline for her penalty. It is well overthrown. Covers on the play by Ken Sims, who is in as an extra defensive back. So, like Iowa, Penn State, three downs and out. It'll be fourth down and nine. John Bruno will punch a Robert Smith. Bruno, last week, averaged 36.9 per punt. Smith averaged 3.6 yards per return. There's a big rush. Bruno gets it away. It's short. He may get a roll, and he gets a good one. And Smith touches it, and it rolls out of bounds to the 10-yard line. So, a 53-yard punt for John Bruno with no return. You can't beat that. Well, Stan, obviously it wasn't planned, but when you let the ball hit the carpet, it has a tendency to roll like that, and that was a bad play by Smith. Allow that ball to hit the ground. And Bruno also did a good job. I think it's important to point out of kicking to the sideline to really destroy their return. So, Iowa, which was able to move seven yards in its first possession and then had to punt, Takes over first and ten at their own ten. Owen Gill got a hole across the 15, gets outside of the 20, across the 20, and is dragged down to the 25 yard line. Mike Zordich dragged him down, but Gill gets 15 yards in the first down. And George had Zordich not been there, he would have gone a lot further. Stan, what they did, it was a bit of an audible. They ran a slam pass. And Gill got a great block from number 35 Bush on the defensive end. Sidna come up and missed the tackle. Now, last year they did this uh, also against Gill. They missed tackles and he broke some long ones. He's a tough back. He's 226. You really have to nail him. First down and 10. Iowa with the initial first down of the game. Gill again. Right tackle. Picks up three out to the 28-yard line. Bob White, Penn State's defensive end, making the tackle. Second down and seven. Scott Halverson, number 87, is into the game. Robert Smith comes out. They operate out of a wing back, which in essence is a wide receiver. Gill again, hit in the backfield, spins away across the 30, first down. King Conlon finally knocked him out of bounds, but again, someone had a shot at him at the line of scrimmage. Well, they put a slot to the wide side of the field. Now, again, this is the same play. Bush plays the box. Somebody had a shot at him. You must tackle him when you make first contact or he's going to break a long one. That time, White missed him also. Rogers Alexander had a shot at him at the line of scrimmage, and he is a good back. Frankly, I think he was the best back we saw all last year. I think so, Stan. They read... It's interesting to see they ran twice at Morgan on, on those two big plays. Gain is 11, first down, along with his first passing attempt. Fires to the flat, and it's almost intercepted by Mike Zordich. Mike Zordich would have had a touchdown. The pass was intended out in the flat. It was underthrown. Zordich was there, and had he been able to hang on, he was gone for six. Well, that was a good defensive call by Penn State. They anticipated pass. They didn't rush anybody. They had excellent coverage. And Chuck Long don't make too many mistakes like that. That was almost six for Penn State. Again, Long last week was cut out of 17, four touchdowns, one interception. Of course, he passed for over 340 yards against Penn State last year. Long again. Here's the draw. Gill is hit, spins away. Off the 40, 35. This is a beautifully executed draw play. Now, Harmon makes a great cut. Rogers Alexander came up the middle, forced him to the outside. Right now, Penn State is not tackling well. 
Rodgers Alexander last two out of three plays had opportunities to drop the running backs for big uh, losses. Instead, he has missed the tackle, and you see what kind of running backs that Iowa has. Both Gill and Harmon, they've had difficulty splitting the playing time. Both are so good. Bush, front man in the eye with Harmon behind him. First and 10 at the Penn State 47-yard line. This drive started at the Iowa 10. Long on a roll. Fires in a flat that is caught. State 41-yard line. That was a great catch by Hayes. That number 28, the defensive back for Penn State. That was Giles. He just piled the Hayes to wouldn't take the ball away. Player is right there. A less disadjustment on the ball. Almost looking at the six. That's Giles. Alexander finally made the tackle. First and 10 for 21. Harmon up the middle near the 16-yard line. And there are some holes there. However, we've got a flag down in the play. And I thought that the whistle blew before the play got underway. A legal procedure on Iowa. By the way, that is an automatic dead ball foul this year. When it happens, the play is dead. So Iowa will lose five. No option for Penn State. It's almost like a delay of game. It'll be first and 15 from the 26. Ten fifty-two to play in the first quarter. No score, but Iowa with the first drive of the game. This drive of Iowa's, their second possession, started at the Iowa 10-yard line. They've already come down to the Penn State 26. It is first down and 15 yards to go. Robert Smith wide to the left. Harmon turns the corner and gets down to the 20-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, make it second down and nine. Dan, yeah, that's basically the same play that they've run so successful. Watch, it's going to go to the short side of the field. They're running at Dan Morgan. Now that's Bush. Conlon comes up, gets caught to the inside, and again, as I said, Penn State is not tackling him. Thus far, Iowa has been able to turn the corner, and a couple of times, George, and I know they want to watch this, Long has been able to roll outside the containment. Well, they did. That was on that last sprint out that they hit Hayes, but they like to set you up now. you got to be careful. Second and nine from the 20-yard line. It's Halverson at the bottom of your screen. Here's Long with the roll. Pressure. He's in trouble. He's hit and he's dropped all the way back at the 33-yard line. Dan Morgan, Bob White in on the pressure. That was a similar play that they hit Hayes. They had a slot formation. They sprint out. Excellent coverage. You'll see it here to the left. Now, Horn can't find anybody. Puts the ball down. Here comes Mashantonio. He actually broke him out of his pattern, tries to reverse back, and Morgan puts him down. They'll give Morgan half a sack and Mashantonio half a sack. Morgan had one sack last week. Now it is third down and 22 yards to go. Iowa scored a touchdown in a similar situation a year ago. Straight drop back. He's firing deep in the end zone, double coverage, and it is batted away. That time, boot coverage by Penn State. Chris Sidner and Mike Zordich on the cover. And so, Iowa now will be faced with a, if they choose, a 50-yard field goal against the win. Again, good defensive call by Penn State. They came with a one-side rush, dropped off, had to, the wide receiver double cover. Tom Nickel is the putter, but he also, or is the place kicker, but also will attempt a short punt. This is a 49-yard attempt. Nickel, one for one on field goals this year. Falls down, and it is no good. It was too low, did not have enough distance off to the left. Somebody got a piece of it too. Steve. So Penn State, after allowing Iowa to drive to the 21-yard line, gets out of it unscathed. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State nothing and Iowa nothing. We'll be back right after this. Penn State first and 10 from its own 32-yard line. This is Steve Smith. The flag is down. Smith gets two out to the 35-yard line. A whistle. Iowa claims there was a fumble and they recovered, but I believe the officials have ruled that Smith was down. However, again, 
We had a penalty on the play. Illegal motion on Penn State. That'll bring it back. What they did, they put Gamble in motion, and they, they shifted the tailback to a slot, and he didn't get set for one second, and the ball was snapped, and that's what the call was. So the ball will be marched back to the 27-yard line, assuming Iowa accepts. That would make it first and 15. Coach Joe Paterno, his team looking for its first first down. This is their second possession. Again, Penn State is 5-3 and three against Iowa. However, they have lost the last two games. Ball moved back. Penalty accepted. First down and 15, Penn State from their own 27-yard line. Scoreless ball game, 9 minutes, 29 seconds to play. Doug Strang, who was 7 out of 20 last week, no touchdowns, two interceptions. Has to go without D.J. Dozier. Pulled groin muscle. He's dressed, but I doubt that he will play. Mumford. Got a hole, 30, and out to the 35, 36-yard line. Well, Penn State picks up a nice nine yards on first down. That'll bring up second down and six. Larry Station. All right, now at this time, Mumford does a good job of breaking it back. He sees his no hole to the outside. Little juke step. Ran a lot tougher than he, than he showed last week. Larry Station, who made the tackle, a junior, 6'1", 233 pounds, had 13 tackles against Iowa State. And Iowa believes he is an All-American candidate. Second down, six. Smith drives forward and gets out near the 40. Spot him at the 39. It's a gain of three. It'll be third down and three. A couple of guys who were questionable, George, and that is Steve Smith, who had a problem. But also, let's keep an eye on Nick Caden, the senior center who has had a bad toe and may have to come out of there after a while. They'll move Smith over the center if they do that. But uh, again, Iowa's jumping their defensive interior linemen, giving Penn State a bit of a problem right now. now. Here's a big play. We feel that Penn State needs to play ball control to keep Iowa's offense off the field. Here's a 33. Strang rolling, got room to run, but he passes. It is incomplete. The pass off the hands of Kevin Campbell on a ball that should have been caught. And there is a big third down conversion that Penn State failed to convert. Well, there's a little sprint out to the left. He's got two men open. He's got the tight end, the Minio to the inside. He's got plenty of time to throw. Now Campbell comes back off the ball beautifully. A little high, but you got to catch them. So Bruno will be in the kick. Robert Smith back at his own 20-yard line. Bruno's kick is wobbly off the side of his foot. Smith takes on a line drive. Fumbles the football. Penn State has recovered. Drew Bykowski has recovered the fumble for Penn State at the Iowa 25-yard line. Drew Bykowski, backup hero, a sophomore from Malvern, PA, 5'9", 186. So the first break of the game goes to Penn State. Well, Stan, that's just what it is. Smith took his eye off the ball, looking upfield to see where he's going to run. Bykowski was there. Now, this should be the lift that Penn State's offense needs. Well, breaks are fine, but if they don't convert into points on the scoreboard, they're really meaningless. Especially against a team like Iowa. First down and 10. Penn State at the Iowa 25 after the fumble punt. Mumford hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss at the 28-yard line. Paul Hufford and Kevin Spitzik knifing through. Mumford takes a three-yard loss. It'll be second down and 13 yards. Very similar play. I don't know if they put Spitzik or, or Station. Either one of them come in there. There's absolutely nobody touched. Kevin Spitzik, a senior, 6'3", 215 pounds. Anytime you're talking about an Oklahoma defense, those two inside linebackers are the key. Second and 13, a throwing down. Mumford on a wing right. Single Blitz. coverage. Strang throwing over the middle. It is almost intercepted. The pass intended for Hamilton, and it was almost intercepted by Devon Mitchell. But it was not a good throw, Stan. Uh, there was good coverage. In fact, they had an inside out on him, and Strang is looking right at him all the way. Just a little pressure. It would have gone to North anyhow because it's holding against Penn State. We'll, we'll see if Iowa wants to go at third and 13 or attempt to make it second and 23 and knock Penn State out of further field goal range. Although that, that really... Well, I think that's what they'll do. I mean, you've got to get them out of scoring range. They turned the check. Well, it was procedure. It was not holding. Oh, okay. So instead of second and 18, obviously they want the third and 13. Right. Doug Strang has yet to complete a pass. Well, 
Well, they're in mashing. All right. In, uh... Third down and 13. Pro set backfield. Receivers flank either side. Strang looking, throwing to the corner to Mumford. It is incomplete. Good coverage offered on the play once again by Devon Mitchell. He was man-on-man -man with Mumford coming out of the backfield. And he was on him like a blanket, Stan. Now, Penn State's line picked up. There was a blitz coming to the inside. He did a nice job. He's got plenty of time. Tries to lead Mumford, but Mitchell's got him there. He's got position on him all the way. Great defensive cover. So, Nick Gansitano will attempt the field goal. It'll be a 44-yarder. Kevin Campbell to hold. There is an angle to the left. A 44-yard attempt by Nick Gansitano. Ball is up. It is long enough, and it is no good. He missed it wide to the right. Gansitano was two for two coming into the game, and Penn State has blown a golden scoring opportunity after recovering the fumbled punt. There's a timeout in the action. 7-10 to play first quarter. The score, Penn State nothing, Iowa nothing. We'll be back right after this. You might give me some coffee, just fine. And a Q2. After Iowa's missed field goal attempt, we move to further action with Penn State in control. And a Q3. After Iowa's missed field goal attempt, we move to further action when the Hawkeyes have the ball again. And a Q4. Following Penn State's recovery of an Iowa fumble that led to Gansitano's missed field goal, Iowa has the ball as we pick up the action. Seven ten to play in the first quarter. Both teams have had opportunities at field goals. Both field goal kickers have missed those field goals. So we are still scoreless. 27 yard line for Iowa. First down and 10. George, Penn State's passing game has not looked good. It has not looked any better than it did a week ago. They have yet to complete a pass. Well, Stan, I, you know, sooner or later they're going to have to break one and then maybe they can pick up from there. He's had excellent protection. Uh, it's just seemed to receive his off coverage. Uh, and the last one, uh, the last two passes, they had a double coverage on the wide out, and then they picked up Mumford coming out of the backfield man from there. Iowa's had the only drive of this game, although it did not result in any points. Play fake, long over the middle, wide open is Hayes, and he slips and falls. A good rush offered there by the Nittany Lions, and it forced Long to hurry. Dan, that's what we call breaking his time is down. He didn't want to let it go over that quick. That was that became a dangerous pass because the, watch it now, it's hanging up there. The rush made him throw the ball a little too soon. The receiver went down. The ball was thrown outside of Hayes. He was supposed to do an eye cut. The ball was thrown outside and credit the rush is Shane Conley. Owen Gill looking outside. He won't get there this time. Todd Moles made a nice defensive play to slow him up. Chris Sidnor came on to clean up the play. Give Gill a gain of one and make it third down and nine. Lance Hamilton. Well, Ham helped. Hamilton really was a key uh, man on that play. The uh, defensive end took the inside. They ran a sweep and, all, and he took it to the outside. Hamilton came up real quick and nailed, and nailed the ball count. So it is third down and nine yards to go. Penn State a year ago had a lot of trouble on third down and long, especially against Iowa. In the eye. Short drop over the middle. He's got his man. It's good for a first down. Hayes the tight end at the 42-yard line. Quick flip over the middle. Ray Issa made the tackle. But again, tight end Jonathan Hayes snuck out there and got the quick slant. That's an audible stand. Now somebody's supposed to pick him up man for man. Uh, Penn State showed blitz but didn't come and and long read it and dumped it off to the tight end and nobody was there well, you know, if that's an audible against the blitz and Penn State didn't blitz they should have been able to defense that so Iowa picks up the first down on third down and nine long firing in the flat got his man close to the first down Paul Halverson or rather Scott Halverson the wingback makes the reception his third catch of the year 
be gain will be about nine. Let's call it at the Penn State 48. It'll be second down and one. Well, when they run it as, as well as they're running it here, it's almost impossible to stop. Elvis in the wideout just makes a, 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 a sideline cut. The ball is right there. Now, again, as I said, Iowa likes to set you up. They're going to have to be careful. They come out with that, and they don't fake that flanker out and then break them upfield, try to hit them deep. Second down and one, so Chuck Wong has a lot of options here. Senate, the fullback, diving for the first down. He'll be close, and I believe he has it. Yes, he does. So Senate picks up one. He's in there at the moment in place of Bush. Dan Morgan made the tackle. Well, they're going to call for the measurement. No, they're not. It's a first down. Penn State, by the way, is yet to pick up a first down. And we've only got five minutes to play in the first quarter. There's Chuck Long who did such damage to Penn State a year ago. Senate and Gill behind Long in the eye. First down and 10, Iowa at the Penn State 47. And we've got an illegal procedure call. Owen Gill, the tailback, moved before the snap. So that'll call, cost the Hawkeyes five yards, moving it back five. But what caused that, Penn State jumped the defense at the last minute. The outside linebackers went out on double coverage as if they were expecting pass. That threw Iowa off, and they jumped, and they got an offside. Hayden Fry has been concerned about his offensive line. They are basically young players, although we should mention that of the 22 starters on the Hawkeyes, only one is what we call in class or in sync in class academically and athletically. Everyone is a redshirt of some sort. So the offensive line, although inexperienced, they have been around the program longer than their academic year would indicate. But listen to the sizes of the offensive line. 280, 270, 240, 272, 276. And the tight end Hayes goes over 240. They grow them big out here in Iowa. First down and 15, Hawkeyes, their own 47. Long. Over the middle, wide open. And it is incomplete. A good, solid shot by Lance Hamilton. Separated the receiver, Robert Smith, from the ball. But he was open and could have hung on. Oh, but this is good coverage. Pretty good protection. He's getting a little heat. Steps up long. Tries to get it over to uh, Smith. Bit of a wobbly pass. He never had control. Second down, 15, Iowa. Lance Hamilton, the junior from Wilkesbury, and of course his brother Harry. Excellent player for Penn State. Chuck Long now three out of six. Penn State with a blitz. Long, a lot of time though. Fires over the middle and is incomplete. Almost intercepted by Bob Antko. Bob Antko, number 93, almost made a diving interception. Sophomore from Swoyersville, PA. Stan, you got to make those interceptions to have a great defensive team. He was in excellent position there. Ball goes down. It's better than a completed pass, but Penn State's defensive people the last couple of weeks have been getting their hands on the ball, but not coming up with an interception. There he is, the sophomore. By the way, Donnie Graham has played a little bit today. Did not play all last week. He will play some today. Rogers Alexander, however, will get most of the work done. Well, again, another key third down and long. Pitch wide. It's a reverse. In trouble. And going absolutely nowhere. That was a design play. It's not that the ball carrier couldn't find anything open, Ronnie Harmon. I think that was a design play. Oh, it definitely was a design play. What broke the timing down was to the side he's coming out to make the fake. He's got a lot of pressure real soon, making him to make his reverse pivot a little too soon. Bobby White. Bobby White, the defensive end, did a good job holding his ground. Pass through ball at a punt. Isom and Kevin Woods back deep. Isom will take the punt dangerously, and a flag is down. Iowa did not allow him enough room to catch. He didn't give him a yard. He definitely came belly to belly with him, and the, the man receiving the punt has to be given a yard to receive the punt. Well, that was Ray Isom, and the guilty party on the play was Craig Clark, the backup tight end, number 49. That'll cost Iowa some penalty yardage. But I guarantee you he wasn't told by Joe Paterno to do that. I mean, that's, that's kind of challenging, you know, death. 
That's like playing Russian roulette with five bullets out of six chambers. But Great concentration by the, the individual, but that's very dangerous. You've either got to call for the fair catch there or. And you know, you only get a five yard penalty yeah. out of it, so it's not really worth the risk. First down and 10, Penn State. Tim Manoa is the fullback. David Clark is the tailback. Again, Dozier will not play today. Penn State, their own 19. Strang trips as he goes back over the middle, wide open. It is intercepted. 30, 25, and knocked out of bounds to the 24-yard line, Mike Stoops. The pass intended over the middle, I believe, for Dean Domenio. It was not well thrown. It did not have enough steam on it, and Stoops picks it off. His second interception of the year. Well, he was just laying back for that. What happened when Strang tripped? All right. He had him go down now. He should have kept the ball. He's trying to force it a little too soon. That gave the defense a time to cover it and come in. And Stoops just waited for that baby. And Kevin Spitzik, the linebacker, tipped it, which knocked it off course. So, Strang is now 0 for 6. He's been intercepted once. And we've got a penalty on Penn State on top of it. There's Mike Stoops from Youngstown, Ohio. Nearby, senior, 6'2", 176. A penalty on Penn State after the interception. So Iowa's going to get the ball near the Penn State 10-yard line. Strang is 0 for 6, one interception. He's now been picked off three times. And again, the key to the play, linebacker spits and tipped the pass and directed it right to Stoops. Well, he never had his footing. He never was set up properly, and the whole timing of the play was way off. And I'm sure he'd like to have that ball back and, and should have taken a loss or, or, or dumped it out of bounds. Now, uh, let's see if Iowa can take advantage of their turnover. Late hit on Penn State, moves the ball half the distance to the 12 yard line. First and 10. Owen Gill inside the 10 and all the way down to the seven yard line. And Iowa's doing a good job of attacking Penn State tackle to tackle. Give Owen Gill five, it'll bring up second and five from the seven. Inside, three minutes to play. In the first quarter, a scoreless football game. This is the deepest penetration by either team. Both teams have uh, committed turnovers. Owen Gill. Hit at the line of scrimmage and drop for no gain by Dan Morgan. That time, they were not able to kick Morgan out. It'll be third down and five from the seven. Penn State's defense came to the inside, took the gaps, took away the running room from Gill. He had no place to go. That was a big play. Conlon finishes him, finishes him off number 31. And Bob Onko came submarining in there to take out the blocker. Uh, I would look for, I'd look for Iowa to throw the ball on this particular thing. Probably that sprint out type of an action, which they do so well. Third down and five. Here's the half ball by Long. He's looking, looking, fires in the end zone, and it is incomplete, overthrown. Triple coverage on the play on Scott Helverson. I think Long really threw that away more than anything. Well, it was a desperation pass. I tell you, Donnie Graham, number 53, coming from the backside, which will be to the right of your screen. Does he ever put one on Long? Can't find a receiver. It's excellent coverage. In desperation, throws it. He really got hit on that. Well, there comes Tom Nickel. He missed a field goal earlier today. One out of two on the season. But this one will be little more than an extra point. It'll be a 25-yard field goal for Nickel. A slight angle to the left. Kick is up. Kick is good. So Iowa breaks on top after the interception. We've got a timeout in the action. 158 to play first quarter. The score. Iowa 3, Penn State nothing. We'll be back right after this. at a Q5. Although Iowa moved to Penn State territory for the second time, the Lion defense again kept the Hawkeyes from scoring. Penn State has the ball again at a Q6. Following Iowa's field goal for the first score of the game, it's Penn State's ball at a Q7. Following Iowa's field goal for the first score of the game, we move to further action with the Hawks in control again. 
Well, Stan, you certainly can't fault Penn State's defense. They played very well. I mean, I was had ample opportunities to get more than three points. Now it's their offense that keeps giving the ball back to this very powerful uh, Iowa's offense, and you can't do that forever without getting hurt. Their offense must generate something. Doug Strang, 0 for 6, and without D.J. Dozier, the threat of a long running play obviously is minimized. The difference in the game, Penn State recovered a fumbled punt at the 25-yard line, missed the field goal. Stoops intercepted a Strang pass, returned to just about the same spot, the 24, a penalty moved to the 12, but the Penn State defense did a good job. They got the field goal, but you have to feel fortunate, George. You give a team uh, the ball on your own 12-yard line and uh, get hold out of it. Hold them to three. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know what it is, whether it's the coverage of Iowa as relative to the game plan, but Strang seems to be going to the wrong receiver. Here's a ground ball, and it's going to roll out of bounds. That'll be a penalty. It was not touched by a Penn State player. Had it been, it would have been free. Now, the Iowa fans think that the Penn State player touched it but the officials, at least initially, are ruling that he did not. Procedure the call in Iowa, they'll have to kick again this time from the 35. There's a case. Well, you can't blame a player for trying to catch the football. Well, no, it's a free ball. You know, you, the offensive team can recover it. Let's see if we can see who that is. It skips. Is that Nick Hayden? Left? No. I'll tell you who that was. I'll find it here in a minute. Paul Pomfret. Tight end on a clip of the New Jersey sophomore playing on the kickoff return team. Now you see Joe Paterno telling his kickoff team, move up five yards, move up five yards. There you go. Isom and Woods are back deep. Nickel will kick off again. I don't know if he was trying to do that against the wind. That was designed or he just missed it. Well, he might have tried to squib it. And, you know, it, it actually looked like an onside kick. So Nickel will kick off from his 35 yard line. the line drive again. Kevin Woods approaches and takes his 13. Looks for a block. 30. Breaks loose out to the 35 and, out, and a flag. Wayne Hick will be called on Iowa and that will move the ball into Iowa territory. Kevin Woods returns the punt 27 uh, kickoff 27 yards but there'll be an additional 15 yards tacked on. So Penn State will start the possession in Iowa territory. That, that Wood is a freshman and he looks awfully good. He, he, he feels the ball with such confidence for a freshman. He is from Birmingham, Alabama, 5'11", 165 pounds. Now, he knows that if his knee touches, he's down right there, so he managed to straddle. See that? He's got a nice flowing running motion, too. He 15 yards for a personal foul. Now, you see the late hit. Almost broke through there. There it is. Good call. There it is. He followed his blockers very nicely, too. So Penn State will start out at the 49-yard line of Iowa. Manoa and Clark behind Strang. This is Clark. Bangs his way out of the 45-yard line. David Clark has not seen much playing time. Larry Station makes the tackle for Penn State. Clark is a sophomore from Dapford, New Jersey. 5'11 and a half, 195 pounds. And your brother was telling us last night he's a pretty hard nosed he, he's, a, he's a strong runner. Uh, uh, the way that Iowa's playing their defense right now, a couple of tight nips flicks down and just try to go right at him might be uh, the thing that Penn State needs to get this offense going. Second and six. This is Clark. He's hit in the backfield and he will lose everything he gained. Paul Hufford, Jr., 6'3 and 262 pounds. Clark loses three, so they're just about well, back where they started. Man, that was a nine. counter. They're supposed to trap Huff at 64. I don't even see the trapper in the picture. I mean, he had a clear shot at Clark. Third down and nine, and Penn State, unless they pick up a first down, will blow excellent field position. Penn State has not picked up a first down this entire game. There's only a few seconds left in the first quarter. Strang, good time. Now he's going to run. 45. He's hit a knock forward to the 43 yard line, and that will be shy of the first down. So Penn State will go the entire first quarter without a first down. There it is here now. They take the draw play that time. He had plenty of time to throw, but there was excellent coverage by Iowa. 
and Strang takes off run, and he ran for over 60 yards last week, but that's not what they want from him. They want him to complete some passes. Bruno will look for the coffin corner. Five seconds left. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Kicks it straight up in the air. Fair catch is called for and taken by Iowa at the 13-yard line. Robert Smith takes the fair catch, and Iowa will take over when we begin the second quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. The score, Iowa 3. Steven, Iowa, again, are not respecting the wideouts. Watch Campbell on first down. Yeah. They got him stretched all the way out there, and they got single coverage on him. They haven't tried to run anything on a post or anything, anything deep at all. They don't respect their speed at all. Starting the second quarter, Iowa leading 3-0, has the ball first down and 10 just outside their 13-yard line. First play of the second quarter. He's hitting fumble, and Penn State has recovered at the Iowa four-yard line. Shane Conlon with the recovery. Chuck Long rolled to his right. He was buried on a Penn State blitz. Watch Conlon on the blitz. Nobody took him. That's Iowa's mistake. Now, fortunately, Long had the ball loose. And Coos, number 83, he came in, finished him off, and Penn State has another big break. So Shane Conlon not only forced the fumble, but recovered the fumble. And Penn State has the football. First down. 10 yard or goal to go at the four yard line. Well, what a player that Shane Conlon is going to be. Yeah, he's going to be a great, it's a young defensive team. They're playing great. Now is where you, here's where you miss the DJ Dozier. Though. This is their power back foot. Power eye to the right. Tony Mumford is the deep man. First and goal from the four. Here's Smith trying to get outside. He is hit at the line of scrimmage and he is stopped for no gain. Forward progress with the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and goal. And Smith really kind of floated out there instead of blasting ahead. Well, he didn't he didn't run with any authority. He made his move a little too soon, flattened out where unless you got your shoulders pointed up, Phil, you're not going anywhere. And here again is where you miss that speed to the outside. Kevin Campbell comes into the game with a play. It is second and goal from the four-yard line. Penn State absolutely cannot afford to blow this break. Manoa and Mumford, pro set backfield. Ray throwing in the end zone, incomplete. John Walter, the tight end was wide open. He slipped. Well, it was a little the, bit of the and slip. the pass was low. Pass was low, but Strobel, number 97, watch it here. He comes into the outside. A little fake into the Mumford. He rushed it, actually. If he stood up, he would have had time. Walter was wide open, and Penn State's offense is really looking very, very bad at this moment. That's a touchdown. That's an absolute gimme touchdown, and Strang threw poorly, and you begin to wonder about his confidence. Third down and goal from the four-yard line. Strang will roll. He's looking that in the end zone. Incomplete. The pass intended for Bellamy. Knocked away, and Penn State on first and goal from the four-yard line will have to settle for a field goal. Now watch this. There's two receivers end up in the same place. It was a rollout. He had the option to run it, but this time he doesn't want to run. He throws. You see Bellamy turning up. Now watch. You see both receivers coming together. You know, that's a broken pattern. Unfortunate for Penn State, they didn't take the uh, opportunity there to get six. Well, Gansitano will attempt a 21-yard field goal, angle to his right. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So Gansitano ties it up, but it is a moral victory for Iowa. Penn State, first and goal in the four, did not gain an inch. There's a timeout in the action to score. Penn State three and Iowa three. We'll be back right after this. At a Q8. After Iowa's fumble on the first play of the second quarter that set up Penn State's field goal, Iowa has the ball. At a Q9. After Iowa's fumble on the first play of the second quarter that set up Penn State's field goal, we move ahead to further action with the Lions in control again. What do they stink? 
Uh, this, you know, that, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's Smith tiptoed on that one. Good call, ball. good call. Yeah. Yeah. But see, I give the, you got to give the ball to Manoa. Nice That's pitiful. Yeah, well, hey, you only get that I was only got three points. Well, that's right. But the further ramifications are, this guy's supposed to be your leader over here. This guy's supposed to be the one experienced offensive player you've got. He's probably afraid that he'll do the same thing as he did last year. Robert Smith and Ronnie Harper. 13.58 to play in the first half. Ronnie Smith. Ronnie Harmon and Robert Smith to receive the kick by Nano. It's short. It's taken by the up man. And he'll get out to the 21, perhaps 22 yard line. Returning the kick for the Hawkeyes was Eddie Colby. He was the up man. I want to remind you that announcers on the telecast are contracted and paid for by Total Communications Corporation. And then he rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of the game without the express written consent of Total Communications Corporation is prohibited. Hayden Fry, head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Fry at Iowa has a record of 35 and 24. I think you see uh, Iowa had a ball deep. They're, they're going to go to their deep passing game. Well, they've got the win now for the first time. Inside the bush, he's got a hole. The 30 across the 30 and out near a first down at the 32-yard line, 34-yard line. That is a first down. It is a gain of 13 for Fred Bush. That's a simple fullback handoff. One-on-one -on -one blocking at the point of attack. 235-pound fullback, broke it to the outside, makes the first down. Mike Haight, the right tackle, did a good job on Carmen Antonio, clearing it out. It's a gain of 13 for Bush. First and 10. Iowa at their own 34. Ball game tied at three. Bush again, not so much room this time. Penn State closes down at the 35-yard line. It'll be a yard gain. Mash Antonio Alexander in on the tackle. It'll be second down and nine. You wonder about Penn State's defense, George. They've got to be down a little bit after giving the ball to the offense at the four-yard line, and all they've not only have been on the field a long time. Now Penn State's jumping their defenses too, which is bothering Iowa. That's why one minute. One play to get a big gain, the next play to get stopped on a, behind the line of scrimmage. But uh, you can't keep your defense on the field constantly like this. By the way, Penn State has yet to get a first down in this football game. Second down nine, Iowa, their own 35. Long. He's rushed. He's going to scramble out of there now. He fires to the near sideline and is caught. Hample at the 40, 45, 50, the 40. Finally down by Ray Dyson at the Penn State 35. Penn State missing tackles in the secondary. Half the third is three yard game over a 30 yard game. Let's watch this. He finds an outlet man here. Now, Apple's open. He comes back to the ball, but the defensive back right here should tackle him, not get reckless. That was Lance Hamilton made a, an unwise play. Let him come over the top. Apple shook him off, almost took it all away. This is what happened last year. Apple, his fourth reception of the season. First down and 10. Iowa at the Penn State 35. It's a late draw. Watch the screen. It is caught. Good solid. Penn State recovers. The ball was caught. Conlin again. By Owen Gill. And a shot by Shane Conlin. And Anko came up with a football. That's a second combo. Watch this. Watch Conlon hit, hit the receiver. This is definitely the tackle that shakes that Ooh. ball loose. What a linebacker he's going to be. Out it comes. Anko is there. Another break for Penn State. Penn State at their own 32. And it's an alert play by Anko because if the ball would have hit the ground, they would have ruled that an incompletion. Uh, their defense is, uh, re Penn State's defense is playing superb. 12-11 to play in the half. Penn State still without a first down. Manoa, nothing. He'll lose a yard. Well, I don't know how bad Hayden's foot is. We know that he's injured. But that nose guard there, they, get, they came in the gap. There was absolutely nowhere for the ball carrier to go. Just too much inside penetration. They're getting single coverage on Campbell, and they got him stretched the wide side of the field. 
And, uh, you know, you just can't let a defensive team get away with that for the whole game. Cap Peterson is the nose tackle, a junior, 6'2", 253 yards. Second down, long yardage. Frank, with time, throws, got his man Hamilton at the 45 and out to the 47. Big league pass there to Eric Hamilton. Kevin Spitzik made the tackle, but the gain is 15. Strength's first completion of the game. Well, that's the way it's supposed to look. He gets good protection. Hamilton, Eric, this is, does a nice curl into the vo void zone, open area, and he drilled that one. That's the old Doug Strang. Doug Strang, who is a co-captain and the leader of this team, has got to get on track. Here you see Hamilton, his first catch of the year. First down and 10, Penn State. Manoa, looking outside, makes a cut, drives forward to the 50 and perhaps half yard into Iowa territory. It's a gain of four for Tim Manoa, second and six. Nate Greer, corner, came up to make the tackle. Watch the penetration by Little, 77. See, right, right there, forcing him. He almost got him in the backfield again. There's too much penetration by the, D, the D down lineman for Iowa. They're getting, beating there the offensive blocks of Penn State. Rob Smith was the man who missed Little. Second down and six. Penn State into Iowa territory. Pitch wide to David Clark. Cuts up and gets a couple near the Iowa 48-yard line. Well, that's the way to run that. They, that was good lateral uh, pursuit by Iowa. The back's got to turn it up and get as much as he can. See, Stan, they're off setting that nose guard to the one side of the center. It becomes a tough cutoff block for him. For Penn State, looking to convert on first down for the uh, third down for the first time. Has it. Might see a screen here. A third down and a long five. Here's Stray. Here's the screen. And Manoa got the first down to the 40. And he's knocked out of bounds at the Iowa 43-yard line. Good, Good call, call, George. That, well, you know what I like about this Manoa? Notice how he goes. His shoulders are going upfield, and he punishes the defensive uh, tackle. You watch him here. He's 230 pounds, and he likes contact. He made a nice catch on the fingertips here. Now watch him finish off this run by punishing the defensive man. At the end of the game, that starts to take its toll. Tim Manoa, sophomore from Pittsburgh, and he has played well in the first game and the first half of this game. Draw play. David Clark gets outside. Hit and drop near the 30-yard line. But a strong run by Clark. Mark him out of bounds near the 30-yard line. It's a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. It's amazing. After Strang hit Hamilton for the first first down, the offense has just perked up tremendously. Well, you know, that's just that's a lot of psychology and emotions to football. That's what it is when, it, when your, your leader and your quarterback is doing poorly. The team tends to drop off. When he starts perking up, the whole offense perks up. Second down. Look at Sid Lewis at the top of the screen there with single cover. There's Clark again. He cuts up. The 20, inside the 20 and down the 17-yard line. Penn State's offensive line is really starting to move the Iowa front five. Well, they're catching that nose guard in that offset. Now watch Hayden block back here. See him block back. And the other guard turned out. Here he comes. Big hole right up the middle. They're breaking it back behind the nose guard. That's good intelligence football and a nice adjustment. 13-yard gain for David Clark. Penn State with the first down at the Iowa 18. And Penn State on its first drive of the game. Again, it is Manoa and Clark. Receiver split either side. Trying with time. Looking in the end zone. Bellamy's open overthrown incomplete. Lewis, Lewis at the top of the screen. He looked for Bellamy all the way. That's a good call. You got to get those defensive backs off the line of scrimmage. Off the line and make them know you can't throw. He's getting good protection. Uh, way overthrown, but he was open. Second down and 10. Bellamy left. Campbell right. Clark, left tackle, perhaps a yard. 
get back. It'll be third down and close to 10. Larry Station, right inside linebacker, made the tackle. Let's call it no game. It'll be third and 10. Stan Dozier might have broken that. Now watch the hole. See now, he goes a little off to his left. He doesn't see the hole break back to the inside. You got to get your head up. You got to read the offensive man's clock so you can make your cut, especially against that 3-4 defense. Third down and 10. Penn State has completed only one third down conversion. That was a screen pass to Manoa. Keep they call it again. Here's Slang in a roll. Looking, firing back. Ball tipped. It was incomplete. And once the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, I believe it was done by Dave Strobel. Penn State is lucky that it fell incomplete. That'll bring on Nick Gansitano. This is a counter bootleg. All uh, right, he might have rushed a little bit. He could have been a little deeper. Strobel will jump up with his left hand, tip the ball. They were fortunate. And again, there were two receivers in the same area, though. See from a different angle here. Stoops was almost there for the interstep. Gansitano's field goal will be a 35-yard attempt. He's one out of two today. Ball is down. Kick is up. It is long enough, and it is good. So Nick Gansitano kicks his second field goal of the game. He's two for three, and for the first time, Penn State has a lead. 8-14 to play in the second quarter. A timeout of the action to score. Penn State 6, Iowa 3. We'll be back right after this. Well, that's, and of course, he got the defense off the field. He, had come and, uh, he came to play. And a Q-10. After another interception by the Penn State defense and the Penn State offense moved. Etiquette number 10, take two. After another interception by the Penn State defense and the Penn State offense moved for Gansitano's second field goal, Iowa has possession. q 11. After another interception by the Penn State defense and the Penn State offense moved for Gansitano's second field goal, it's Penn State's ball again later in the second quarter. Normally not as much of a pig. I can't believe I'm spilling coffee. I'm... No cigarettes. Frustration. See Lewis when they put the plank to the wide side. They get the run back over there. He says, you got to run him, you run all. You know, you took the pass. They got to get him. It seems like they've got four receivers on two. Where's the tight end? 8-14 to play in the first half. Penn State, the first lead of the game for them, 6-3. to three. Ronnie Harmon near side. And at the far side, it is Robert Smith. Massimo Mank with a kickoff. It is high. Harmon will take and is four. Up the middle. To the 20, still on his feet, and that's as far as he will go. Penn State closing the hole quickly. Harmon returns to 16 yards, and Iowa will take over just outside their 20-yard line. You know, Stan, the best thing about Penn State's drive there, making a few first downs, not only does it give it the offensive confidence, they got their defense off the field so they can take a bit of a breather because they've been playing excellent. Well, the Penn State field goal drive started at their own 32-yard line. They got it down to Iowa's 18. They were stalled there, but it was the first consistent drive or any drive of any kind they have had. In fact, that was the first first down they managed to get in the football game during that drive. First down in 10 Iowa. Long, short drop, fires in the flat. It is. And a rule and a catch out to the 29-yard line. Nice catch by Ronnie Harmon. He dragged the one foot, got it in. The game will be nine. It'll be second down and a bit more than a yard. Well, they got the one back offense. They're spread out. And Hayden Fry is going back to what he likes to do, throw the ball. This is a great catch. He dragged the one foot in. That's beautiful concentration by Ronnie Harmon. Ronnie Harmon, of course, is a tailback, but remember, last year he was a wingback, which translates to a wide receiver, so he can catch the football. Caught two passes last week for a touchdown. Gill in trouble, but he drives across the 30, gets to the 31, and that will be enough for an Iowa first down. Penn State really changing their defenses on every play, trying to confuse Iowa, so they can't set them up. Iowa likes to set you up. You stay in the same defense, they're going to try to set you up and get a one-on-one -on -one situation with a deep receiver, and, and Long has an uncanny knack. When that receiver gets open, he doesn't miss. First and 10, Hawkeye from their own 31. First and 10, Iowa, their own 31-yard line. Harmon, this time, is flanked way out to the right side. Gill, the lone setback behind Chuck Long. Mike Garrett in defensive tackle for Penn State. 
Long to throw. Over the middle, and it is caught by Harmon at the 46-yard line. And he was covered on the play by Isom. He just made a great catch. He got the great. It's a double coverage. That Alexander in front of him, too. Now, he, he watch this. Thing. It's, a, it's a great throw and a great catch. Now, Harnham, you'll see Alexander in front. He gets between the linebacker and the secondary and just goes up and takes the ball away. That's great execution. He's a super athlete. Ronnie Harmon, a junior, 5'11", 192 pounds. Makes the reception, and Chuck Long calls a timeout. 7.27 to play in the half. Iowa will have it first and 10 at their own 46-yard line. But what a difference in last year because, you see, None of the receivers are wide open like last year. And when they do make the reception, they are being punished. There are white shirts around there, and they're making them pay for whatever yardage they're getting. Well, certainly one of the question marks coming into the game was how well Penn State's defense would play. You know, the one thing about college football, of course, is you get new people every year. And you, it's not fair to compare the Penn State defense of last year as opposed to this, different people. But uh, regardless of what happens from here on out, it is quite obvious, George, the Penn State defense is much better than it was a year ago. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's a young defense, you know. And he, and he, uh, Joe Paterno's playing a lot of plays in there. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they can maintain this type of coverage, but sooner or later they'll pick one off. Uh, a long, uh, at that time they only rushed four people. It was a one-back offense. They dropped seven off, and he drilled it between the linebacker and the secondary. Long's uh, having, uh, I should, excuse me, George, this eight for 12. He has been intercepted once by Bob Onko, but uh, not the kind of passing yard, certainly, that he got a year ago. Well, he's not getting the ball deep, and that's, this is what, that's what counts. Single set is Owen Gill. Slot left, Harmon wide right. First and 10, Iowa, their own 46. This is Gill. Gets a good block. Gill will be run out of bounds at 48. Good offside pursuit by Onko's played a nice game in Lance Hamilton. Gain is two, it'll be second and eight. They, they might have gotten Harmon on clipping on that. He cracked back, he cracked back out on, on the defensive end and uh, that was pretty close to being a clip. No call made. Second down and eight. 7.23 to play in the half. Penn State leading 6-3. Now you got Happel wide left. Same formation. Second down, eight. Long rushed out of there. He's going to keep, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Garrett was in there chasing him. Bobby White coming over also. No gain. Third and eight. But he got tremendous pressure from Moles. Watch, there's only a four-man rush. Now watch Moles at the top of your screen. He keeps driving, 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 okay. driving. Long senses him, breaks out of the pocket, which you want the quarterback to do. Made a short gain of it, but Penn State was able to put pressure on there with a, a four-man rush. Good job by Mike Garrett, senior from New Hyde Park, New York. Third down and eight. Another big third down play. They're great at this. Line. Here comes a blitz. Long throwing deep. Hamilton makes the incomplete. Hamilton almost had the interception. You hear the crowd booing. They believe that Hamilton bumped Harmon out of bounds. The officials did not rule that to be the case and, and be advised that had Harmon caught the ball, it would have been ruled incomplete. Yes, he was out and he can't come back in. But now he, this is what they were trying to set up. The outside rush, I think, made him throw a little too soon. But Hamilton has excellent coverage here. He's running with him stride for stride. This is something that they didn't have last year. Now, Ham Lance Hamilton is going to be a great defensive back. He's got excellent position on him here. See him out of bounds right there. He cannot come back in. And uh, no interference ruled at all. By the way, Harmon is hurt on the play. He's down. We'll wait to see what happens. I'm sorry to interrupt you, George. What I uh, want to get that rule in. Something else interests me. We can get a shot at it perhaps next time Iowa has the ball. Their tight end, Jonathan Hayes, stands up at the line of scrimmage like a wide receiver, although he's lined up inside. Well, does that help us release? Is that why? Yes, and uh, uh, San Diego uh, uh, Chargers used to do that a lot with Kevin Winslow. It gives him a better release. He can read the secondary a little bit, and you can hit the short pop to him, too. Uh, and many of the blocks that he's asked to make are stand-up, you know, uh, run blocks where he's just going to try to get into the linebacker anyhow. Uh, you know, it's a question what you think is best for your, the individual play. Gary Kostrula, but a kick. Isom and Woods back deep with Penn State. Big rush by the Nittany Lions. Short kick. 
Isom calls and takes the fair catch at his own 17, 18 yard line. 6.27 to play in the half. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 6, Iowa 3. We'll be back right after this. Well, the Penn State defense has done yeoman work against Iowa. You know, and at this particular juncture, they've settled down to the point where it looks like they're taking control of, the game. of Iowa's offense. Now, if they can generate some offense here, Penn State, this could be a very interesting ball. Penn State would like to control. Get some more on the board for halftime. This is Mumford. Gets two out to the 20-yard line. Iowa's defense very quick. They really come from the backside. Well, it'll be second and eight. I thought the last defensive series was most important because uh, Penn State had just scored and they didn't want Iowa to come right back. And that play, you see Peterson, the nose guard, run around the center and what we call squeeze it from the backside. Good cut by Mumford. If he was sealed off, Mumford might have gotten through the hole and made a long game. Penn State's offensive line picking up just a bit. Wilson, Woofter, Hayden, Smith, and Conlon, second and eight. Here's Strang in a row. He's got room to run. He does so to the 25. He gets out to the 27-yard line. He'll be shy a yard of that first down. It'll be third down and one. So that's the way the play's designed, Stan. If the, the coverage drops off or the defensive end loosens up and you've got a halfway decent running, running quarterback, he has that option to take it for four or five yards. Now, he should hit the corner a little faster. Puts the ball up, puts, brings it back down, and at least he makes a few yards at it. Third down and a long one yard to go. And very important that Penn State hold on to the ball here. Mumford drives forward. Close. And it's going to be close. I think it's a little short. Though. Had to get to about the 28 and a half yard line. And it depends on the spot. And I'll tell you what. First down, Penn they State. Got they spotted it. Well, he got a good spot. He, that was good hard running at that, at that particular time. I, I think he ran it off a draw play. I don't think he was fooling anybody. It was the only one to go. But he ran off that sprint out action, and that's what we call sprint out draw. You keep seeing the quarterback roll up to that one side, then he hands off to the tailback. I got a question for you, Coach. Tim Manoa had a great second quarter, and they come back with Steve Smith. Can't answer it. Maybe just rest. This is Steve Smith. He makes a nice run, 35-40, and across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Yeah, I told you they should have had Smith in there. Well, the game, the game is 14 in the first down. Well, you know he's a glider. You know all running backs got styles. Now watch this. It doesn't look like he's moving at all. He's trying to follow his blockers. Then he makes the cut at the right time, and he and he picks up some nice yardage. He's a gliding runner. Doesn't look like he's running with power, but he's deceptive. Steve Smith with a 14-yard gain, his longest of the year. And Penn State, they started at their own 18. They're off to their own 43. First down, strikes in trouble. Scrambles away and gets a couple off to the 45-yard line and did well to pick up two. Mike Hooks makes the tackle. Good pressure that time by the Hawkeyes. Great defensive game. Mm -hmm. right, let's watch here. Strang he gets good protection. He just can't find anybody. Decided a little too quickly to, to take off and run it. I don't know if the, the tight end was open for a second there. Give that uh, pressure to the Iowa secondary because he really did have time to throw, I would say. He's doing a little bit of better job of picking out his receivers, but he's got to be a little quicker. Second down and nine. Smith up the middle. Gets out to the 48 yard line. It'll be third down and seven. Hedgeman making the tackle. Getting by, better blocking in the trenches. They're, they're, they're stopping that Iowa's penetration, and then the back can bounce it off, and, and you'll just kind of slip and slide and, and pick up some uh, yardage. Third down. Let's call it about six to go for the first down. And another big possession down. Three minutes, 20 seconds to play in the half. Penn State leading 6 3. Strang with time. He throws. Got his man. Good for a first down at the 44 yard line. Once again, it is Eric Hamilton. 
and it's good for a Penn State first down. Well, that's a good throw, but give the credit to Hamilton now. There's good coverage there. Hunter's on him, number 14. Watch him take those two steps back to the ball, enable him to get away from the defender and make the first down reception. That's a big, big play. And the clock will run into three minutes to play. First down and 10, Penn State at the Iowa 44-yard line, and indeed, it has been a Penn State quarter here in the second quarter. Here's Tony Mumford, right guard, gets one down to the 43-yard line. Second down and nine. Doug Strang, by the way, has improved. And tell you that he's improved. He's three out of 13, but at one point, he was 0 for 6 with an interception. He's throwing the ball with more authority. Yeah, even when he, when he was throwing, started off poorly, he wasn't throwing the ball well. And he's hit two big third down conversion passes. Of course, the one that will stick in your mind is he had John Walmart in the end zone and threw a bad pass, and they had to settle for a field goal. Second down and nine, Penn State at the Iowa 43. Clock running. They're going to go deep. There it is. Here's the takeoff, and it is overthrown on the outside shoulder of Hamilton. He was covered, though. Well, it's good coverage, but he got behind the, the corner man, and the safety was coming over, uh, number nine, Sims. You got to drill it in there. That's a tough play, play, a pass to complete, but you expect it from big time quarterback. Clock stop with 2 10 to play. Third down and nine yards to go. Another possession down. Slaying on a roll to the left. Looking, got a man wide open, and it is caught. Herb Bellamy inside the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 29 yard line. It'll be very close to a first down, but he's got it. He's inside the 29, so Herb Bellamy makes the catch. And this is a great throw. He's rolling to his left, and he hits Bellamy on that out pattern, very similar to the play that Iowa runs. They get the first down, he stayed in bounds. That's good football. That was a good pass, a good catch, and an even better job by our cameraman down to the field level. He was right there. Nice right, job, fellas. Right on the money. First down inside the 29-yard line. 2.04 to play. Penn State with all their timeouts remaining. Pitch wide to Tony Mumford, needs a block, cuts inside and gets a couple down to the 26-yard line. Gain of about two, it'll be second down and eight yards to go. Pretty good running, but again, a fraction late on the cut. It was good lateral mobility, sideline to sideline. He's got to cut it up and try to crack one of those seams. Let's right, see right here, now, too much of an angle. Now he lost some of his momentum. He cut a little sooner. Could have picked up five or six, and you never know what's going on. And that gave Kevin Spitzer, the inside linebacker, time to come over and get him. Second down, eight yards to go. Penn State on a good drive. Strang, quarterback draw. Cuts inside the 25, down to the 23. Mike Stoops, strong safety, made the tackle. The game is three. It'll be third down, five yards to go, and the clock is running. Only a minute and ten to play. Pretty good call. Pretty good call. He ran it better this year. That's Rod Smith, 79, trying to get out in front. Stoop, 41, Third came over. Well, the clock is running under a minute. Penn State has all three timeouts left. They have chosen how they're going to get it, but they wasted 12, 15 seconds in doing so. So we've got a timeout of the action. 55 seconds to play in the first half. The score, Penn State 6, Iowa 3. We'll be back right after this. Yeah, but he, was, he wasn't looking over, but they were waiting. If they, if they can get a first down here, they got two timeouts, you know, left inside of a minute. I'm just saying, it could, at that time, I'm not going he wasn't looking over at the side. I keep throwing that. I throw that one on one, and that guy that corner. He get that kid's got good speed. If he gets gets behind him, gives him a chance to run under it. We got a ball game now. Huh? Three's not gonna help him too much. But. Keeping the ball away from him, though, that's the biggest thing. 55 seconds to play in the half. Third down, six yards to go. Penn State at the Iowa 24-yard line. 
One of the big plays in this football game right here. Swain looking in the end zone, wide open, touchdown! Herb Bellamy for the touchdown. He ran the post pattern, and it's a touchdown pass. The first of the year for Penn State. Bellamy in the slot. They went to man-to-man -man coverage. He ran a post. These kids, Bellamy and those Lewis, have good speed. you got to give them a chance to run for it. He's got excellent protection. You see Bellamy coming, running the post, right in here from his slot formation, wide open, touchdown Penn State. Big play. 24-yard touchdown pass. It caps an 82-yard drive. Gansitano accepting the point after. Gansitano with the point after. And with 48 seconds to play, and this will raise some eyebrows, Penn State leading 13-3. to three. Now you're talking about an 82-yard drive against an exceptional defensive football team. Again, watch. The protection did it. Smith did a good job. Picking up his man. This is a well-thrown ball. He let the receiver run under it. Bellamy adjust to it a little bit, but he was wide open. Again, again, no credit to defense. But they, the defense is giving him the opportunity to get this young offense, get the team shot. Absolutely. The Penn State defense allowed them to stay in the football game. And certainly the offense couldn't have been at any lower point when the Penn State defense caused a fumble at the Iowa form. They took over first and goal at the fourth, didn't move an inch, and had to settle for a field goal. The defense kept them in there, and the last two times they've had the ball was very good, George. And again, an 82-yard drive hitting on several key third downs. Indeed, the touchdown pass came on third and six. And uh, this offensive football team, this entire football team, has got to be feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, they did a good job of mixing up the run and the pass. Right? Well, let's get credit to the offensive line. They've really begun to do a job. Let's see if Penn State squibs here with only 48 seconds to play and a half. No, they're kicking away. This is Ronnie Harmon in his six. Has a hole, and he gets outside, and he may be gone. Sidner's after him, and he brings him down at the Penn State 44-yard line. And if Sidner were not a Pennsylvania State sprint champion, Harmon would have been gone. And it's a big play for Iowa because yeah. now they're in position to get at least three. Just yeah. what you couldn't afford. Well, the thing is, with a, with a guy like Harmon, you cannot let up. Now, just watch how graceful he finds it. He's looking for the hole right here. He sees it. Now he turns and cuts back to his left, and he starts going into his sprint. And as you said, if Sidner was not the state champion uh, in the Pennsylvania track championships, he would have never caught it. 38 seconds. Iowa has two timeouts left. This is Warren. He's going to go deep. He's throwing in the flat. It is caught by Quinn Early at the Penn State 31. It's a gain of 13. The clock will stop as they change the chains. 32 seconds. Quinn Early, his first reception today. First down and 10. Iowa at the Penn State 31. They're already in field goal range. Remember, they have the win at their back. Pitch wide to Gill. He runs out of bounds and gains a couple to the 29-yard line. 24 seconds to play, and Iowa still has the two timeouts left. I actually think he ran that two stop the clock because, uh, you know, he just drifted out towards the sideline and stepped out. What Penn State really needs here is a sack. It would knock Iowa out of field goal range and also force them to use a timeout. Well, we can kind of find out if they really did change their philosophy. You don't like to gamble too much with 16 seconds and have them throw the bomb on you, but a sack would take them out of field goal range. Second down and eight yards to go. Long with the roll. He's going to run. That's looking outside, and Penn State keeps him in bounds, and a flag on Penn State. A late hit. It'll cost them... 15 yards or half the distance and it'll also stop the clock with 17 seconds and now Iowa indeed is in position to get a touchdown. Mike Zordich hit him late. That's really not smart football. It would have been third down and four instead it'll be a first down at the Penn State 12. Watch Zordich. Well, that was close though. That was close. He was going down but in those situations avoid it. Or at least you come down with your hands. Yeah, well, you he was going hand. down. Sometimes you can't pull up. I don't think it was malicious. But the thing is, with 17 seconds to go, you're giving the, a team a chance to get right back in the ball. Game. So it's first down and 10. 
17 seconds to play in the first half. Clock is running. The fumble! Ball's loose! I think Chuck Long's got it. He's, He's got, got it, it, but and he ripped, calls the time clock's out. still running. Uh, he calls timeout, so that's a wasted play. So as it stands right now, they probably only have one play from scrimmage and then they'll have to get the field goal. Well, this is it. They'll probably go for the touchdown now and then try to get the field goal because he doesn't want to miss the opportunity to get another three up there. Lance Hamilton almost came up with it. Ended on top of Long. You see, of course, the 15-yard penalty, or in this instance, 12 yards after this is on Zordon. Had there not been the penalty, Iowa would have the ball way back at the 30-yard line. And uh, Well, I think they still go would have the same strategy. One pass, Steve tried to go for the score and then come back with the field goal. The question would, would he made the field goal from the, the, the deeper distance? However, they are in a very dangerous position to put the ball in the end zone. They're very tough down here, and they have a good passing game that's geared for a short yardage near the goal line. Well, George, in that case, would you look for a blitz? Uh, or you it know, it, it's one of those things, if it works, it's great. If you don't, you know, uh, I, I, I would put some pressure on him uh, because they're so close, the receivers can't get too deep. He will try to either run By just a uh, kind of an alley-oop type of thing in the corner, maybe get in a man-to-man -man thing situation, or he'll just try to curl the ball maybe to the tight end over the middle. That's who I'd be looking for right now. Well, Penn State is going with four defensive backs, so there's no extra back in there. The down is inconsequential. Well, see down here, this is what it, they might just try to. Ten seconds to play in the half. Iowa has one timeout left. It's a draw play. He's loose. Touchdown. Ronnie Harmon. Penn State expecting pass. They work the draw play to Ronnie Harmon. 16-yard touchdown. And this game has just taken a drastic change. But it was, it was a great run. It was a good call. It was, a, it was a real gamble now. Let's watch it here. Now he makes his cut. Right here, looks like he's going to get taken down by his mole. He makes a flat 90 degree cut. And that's just good running. That's good running. A great call. 16 yards. Ronnie Harmon with the touchdown, his third touchdown of the year. Now Nickel with four seconds to play in the half will attempt the extra point. It is good. And instead of a 10 point lead at halftime, Penn State will have a three point lead at halftime, and the thing that set it all up was Ronnie Harmon's kickoff. Well, it was all Harmon. You know, he he run it, runs it back to get him in a scoring position, then he runs a draw play, which, you know, 90% of the backs could have never made that cut. That was a Kurt Warner cut, where he just stopped, went right along the uh, the chalk line, and, and was able to get in the end zone. It was a great run. That's a heck of a call by Hayden Fry also, because he knows he's got three. He has no really... No chance of a turnover with a draw play. If he doesn't make anything, so he gets the three points anyway. Well, so it shows what confidence he has in that running back. You know what I mean? To, uh, as you say, it's a big gamble. It was a very good course for Chizik wise But you got to know you got a back that's got the chance of, you know, of doing it. Well, I would expect Iowa will squib this with only four seconds to play in the half. It's amazing. Penn State scoring a touchdown with less than. A minute to go. Iowa gets the ball after the great kickoff return. With 38 seconds to go, and they move for a touchdown. Now, there's, there's an instance where if Zordich did not get the penalty, no they, way he can they score wouldn't there. do that. That was, that was too much of a... Well, Penn State falls on the ball. Bill Emerson, no time goes off the clock, so Penn State will be obligated to run one offensive play. Bill Emerson recovered the swift kick. And the game, in momentum, indeed, has taken a dramatic shift. Penn State had stunned the crowd, marching 82 yards and controlling all of the second quarter, except for the last minute. Iowa, 44-yard drive, but again, it was the Ronnie Harmon kickoff return that set it all up. Iowa's first touchdown of the game. Penn State has held Iowa with 10 points. Well, first down and 10. Let's see if Penn State eats it. No, strangle back to throw. Looking deep over the middle, it is incomplete and almost intercepted. And that will be the end of the first half of play. So, the game that has turned, Iowa taking the early lead, Penn State catching up. Penn State taking the lead, and Iowa certainly back in it. That is the end of the first half. The score, Penn State 13, Iowa 10. We'll be back right after this. Penn State 
has the option here to begin the second half. They have elected to receive, and they will be moving right to left. So they receive to begin the second half, but they will have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. They'll be going against the wind in the third quarter, but the wind, George, has been no factor whatsoever. Basically insignificant at this uh, moment. So as we have seen or saw at the end of the first half, obviously the kicking game can be significant. Ronnie Harmon's long kickoff return set up their touchdown and got him back in the game. And I think it'll be interesting to see what kind of emotional lift it has given Iowa, and if at all, it has caused an emotional letdown for Penn State. Well, you know what a coach does at this particular situation? He says, look, forget about the first half. We got one half to play. We win the second half. We win the game. Neither team. Nobody really has to play catch up or anything like that. So it should be a good, solid second half of football. Nickel the kickoff to Kevin Woods. Woods, about three yards deep, he's coming out. Got a hole. Yes, he does. 20, 25 across the 25 and out near the 28 yard line. So Kevin Woods, the freshman, is brought down by Ken Sims. And he took a three yards deep, so he's got better than a 30-yard return. Penn State's assistant coach is very high on Kevin Woods. Freshman, got tremendous speed. Now obviously, Penn State is going to have to control the ball as they did in the second quarter. They start out at their 28-yard line. Strang, 5 out of 17 for 75 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Smith and Mumford in the backfield. This is Tony Mumford. Tries to make the cut and picks up three yards where there wasn't all that much there. So Mumford does a pretty good job picking up three. It'll be second down and seven as we get the third quarter underway. Penn State leading 13 to 10. Well, you got that good lateral movement by the defense. That's about all you can do. Try to make a good shot, cut, a cut upfield, and get as much as you possibly can. Second and seven. Strang with a play fake, looking, got a man wide open. It is caught by Domenio. Inside the 35 and down to the 31-yard line. Doug Strang hits Domenio. Well, that was a great call. It was second. It faked a little draw, as you see the inside. And we finally, they finally hit Domenio, the tight end. He's running free right up the seam. Perfect throw, perfect throw. A 37-yard gain, and Penn State has it first and 10 at the Iowa 32-yard line. George will play the same play against Alabama last year. The community coach the touchdown. It was the same play, basically. Now we've got a wing left. Ray rolling. He's throwing deep. He's got a man open, and it is intercepted at the five-yard line. Mike Scoop is on the cover. But coming down was Keith Hunter. Hunter makes the interception. The receiver well, was open for a moment, but it was under throw. Well, that's it. He didn't get it up and over. And he had plenty of time here to throw. He was a little off balance. He didn't get the receiver a chance to get he's under thrown. Scoop stepped in front. But if you're going to get an interception, that's the place to get it on the opposing team's five yard line. But it hurts because you just completed a big 37 yard pass. You look like you were on your way. Well, first down and 10, Iowa with the five. Gill, up the middle, gets out to the seven before the hole. Closes very quickly. Good play by the linebackers. To close it down after the two-yard game for Owen Gill. Gill, in the first half, had 44 yards rushing on 11 carries. Second down and eight, Iowa, their own seven, just underway in the first half. Strang, his second interception of the game and fourth of the season. This is Gill again looking outside. He's got a hole, but Chris Sidnor does a nice job to bring him down in the open field at the nine. It'll be third down and six. Another two yards for Owen Gill. I don't want to praise Conlon too much, but again, you have to give him an assist. What he did, he made so much penetration. He made Gill give ground just enough to allow the corner man sitting there. Now watch here, 31. You see right here, he's fighting off the block, he makes Gill give ground. That allows, see, now you'll see the, uh, sitting in the 27, the cornerback come up and make the tackle. Good analysis, George, and good job by our cameraman, 
Shane Conlon the key to the play. Now here's a big third down and six. The Penn State can force him to punt. They get the ball in excellent field position. Here's the draw again. We're driving forward, but short of the first down is Owen Gill at the 14 yard line. It'll be fourth down and one yard to go. That time they close down nicely. Yeah, we talked at the top of the show it's going to be a defensive game, and that's just what it is. It's a good call. He's hoping to break it. These, these two backs, Gill and Harmon, are great running backs. Mike Russo made the tackle. Penn State may have had 12 on the field. They did. They did. Yeah, and it's going to cost them a first down. Penn State had too many men on the field. Matt Johnson, a sophomore defensive end from York, PA, tried to run off the field. And a delay of game penalty on Penn State, and it'll give Iowa a first down. And you see, there's where the defense should have called timeout. Well, I think it happened so quickly, yeah. they didn't know it. But that's what you have when you got a bunch of young kids in there. You got a bunch of young kids in there, and he should have gotten off the field. Now, wait a minute, George. I think Penn State may have called timeout in time. Right. Yes, they did. Penn State got the timeout they did get it in out. time. All right. All right. Well, some heads-up play by someone. Who called it? That's, that, that would be a heads-up right. play. It certainly couldn't have come from the sideline. It would have to be quick. Good thinking on the part of someone on the public return unit. You've got a timeout. The score, Penn State 13, Iowa 10. We'll be back right after this. That was an awfully, would have been an awfully big play. Timeout for Penn State. The snap is fumble on the punt, but it is kicked away by Costa Lava. Ison takes it as 35. Up the middle of the 40 and outside the 40 to the 43 yard line. So a good punt by Costa Lava. But Penn State will have the ball in excellent field position, and they were moving the ball at the time of Strang's interception. So first and 10, Penn State for own 43. If they had to rush on, they would have blocked it. They had a return on, and Castro Bala had a chance to pick up the ball, and he got a great punt off under the surface. 11.49 to play in the first half. Penn State leading, rather in the second half, Penn State leading 13-10. Mumford up the middle, got a nice hole, driving all the way out to the 49-yard line. Tony Mumford with six yards, it'll be second down, and four, Larry Station made the tackle. Once again, when that nose guard offsets, Hagen's taking him, as a straight handoff, the guard blocks the linebacker, and that's a good play, simple but good. You think there was a blocking assignment change? Oh, that definitely, happened. definitely, they're gonna, they'll run a little bit more of that. Second and four. Mumford, what is it doing? Not as much this time, but he's into Iowa territory near the 47-yard line, about a half yard shy of the first down. At least third down and less than a yard for the first down. You see, if that nose guard's offset, you run the dive play away from him, the center will block him back, the guard can release on the linebacker, and you got one-on-one, -on -one and the back's up, you know, he gets up in the hole, you're going to make for a time. Uh, if he's lined up head on the center, either at the double team or the hope the center can handle it. Well, uh, it's a tough job under all circumstances that Hayden's hurting a little bit. So it makes it even more difficult. Third down and less than a yard for Penn State. Mumford, he's got that first down at the Iowa 45-yard line. So unlike a week ago, Penn State now beginning to convert on third down and short. Penn State, Penn, you know, I don't like to jinx him, but it looks like Penn State's offensive line getting off the ball well, starting to control the line of scrimmage. First down, 10, the Hidden Lions. At the Iowa 45. Mumford breaks a couple of tackles and drives forward for the 42 yard line. Back on a play. And it's going to go against Penn State. Illegal motion. The game is free, but Iowa will take the penalty to make it first and 15. I think the fullback Smith jumped a little bit on Strobel and Spitzig on the tackle. 
actually been a relatively penalty free game. Penn State, only the fourth penalty. Dan, the game has been exceptionally well officiated. It's really been an outstanding job by the official. The Hawkeyes with the option. Penn State tunnel has already moved back, as you see. So I will accept the four and five yard penalty, moving it back just inside midfield. It'll be first down and 15. Now here's where the defense has got to be wary. They might change their defense now for look for the pass. You see, because this is actually a passing situation. Smith and Mumford behind Sprague. First and 15. There it is. Sprague, oh. here's a screen to Mumford. Needs a block. Gets two yards to the 48-yard line. Good defensive play by Dave Strobel, who forced him out of bounds, but an even better play by Iowa for taking out the two blockers. Nick Caden was out there. All right, there's the screen. You know, he couldn't see. Little hand fake to Mumford. He tries to dump it off. It was very, very well defensed by Iowa, but Lance, uh, Eric Hamilton, number 30, running the post was wide open. Probably more as a deep play than anything else. Second down, 13 for Penn State at the Iowa 48. Out of the eye of the pro. Hand off inside to Mumford, nowhere. Give him two to the 46. It'll be third down and 11. They have to throw more short passes. Now, you, now what you're doing is they're relying a little too much on the run. You know, and, uh, you, you got to have that balance. You got to, you got to throw those short passes. There we go. Trying to find some daylight. Actually, defensive line of Iowa stood up the offensive line of Penn State, and there was no place to go. Third and 11. Yep. Another possession down. Blitz. Trey can run for it. 45 to the 40. He's hit and he stopped shy of the first down at the 37. He fumbles, but was he rolled down? Oh, to me, he was down. I don't see how they could possibly do it. It'll be fourth down and two. Well, you're at the 38-yard line, George. Field goal's out of the question. You're going to try to pin him deep? Yes, here comes yeah, John Bruno. Well, when you're protecting a three-point lead with an explosive offense like this, you want to make that offensive team to run as many, many plays as they possibly can and go as far as they John possibly Bruno can. John Bruno, who averaged 40 yards a punt with a long punt of 52 yards, is in to do the kicking. Robert Smith, a single safety back in his pen, but Bruno will be looking for the sideline here. They're coming after him. Bruno gets it away to the near sideline. Smith single spare catch ball bounces. Penn State can down it, and they do so at around the 12-yard line. That's exactly what they want. Got the nice bounce. Good job. By the Nittany Lions, and down to the ball was Trey Fowler. Well, Iowa will start it out at their own 13-yard line. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 13, Iowa 10. We'll be back right after this. Headed to 14. Following Strang's second interception of the game, the Penn State defense held again. Iowa cut it, and the Lions have the ball. Iowa first and 10, their own 13-yard line. Here's the counterplay to the fullback, and it's Bush getting across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Bush with a three-yard gain will be second down and seven. First time they've tried that play. Well, they, the, 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 the first, they tried the first play of the game, two, two tight ends cross buck. This is a little counter, a real cross buck. You know, he's got to be careful down here too, Iowa, because they don't want to turn the ball over. So that's why they went for the punt, try to pin him deep. Under eight minutes to play. Penn State holding with three point lead, 13-10. Here's Bush again. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped for no gain. Good defensive play by Lance Hamilton. And as he played a strong ball game this afternoon, especially on run support. Well, see, when you go to two tight ends, you can bring your corner back up about four yards off. See him read it? He, brought, he read the tight ends block, came, forced the play. Good time. Mike Flagg, number 86, the tight end, passed up Hamilton to get up field. And Hamilton was able to snake through and make the stop, so it's no game. Third down and seven yards to go. And again, if Penn State can hold here, they will get, or should get, good field position. And Long is going to be forced to use a timeout. So both teams now have used timeouts when they didn't want to. 
you're seeing a great defensive football game. Defenses are changing defenses, trying to mix up the offense again. That's what happened here. He saw something he didn't like. He knows it's a big, you know, big uh, first down situation here. Uh, I was very good on third downs and converting to first downs, so he called the timeout. I think something very important, perhaps, to point out is that Iowa has had to punt twice in the second half, five times overall, and I'll bet you they didn't punt five times in the game last year. I don't recall. I don't, I don't either. I'm, very much that I'm going guessing. Down the field. Well, Joe Paterno, George, said before the game that his defense must mix up their coverage so that Iowa can't detect any pattern. Just from the score and what we've seen, obviously, he's been successful in That's, doing so. Yeah, they have been very successful. And what else that they've done has been very good. They've taken the big play away from Iowa so far, outside of that point, the kickoff return. They've taken the big play away from it. Now, it looks like if this is going to be the tempo of the game for the rest of the game, one big play will probably win it for the whatever team wins the game. Well, certainly the Penn State defense is hoping for some help that they're able to stop Iowa from the Penn State offense because they have done their job. This is a football team, the Hawkeyes, that last year averaged 32 points a game. Long 7 out of 15, 116 yards. Here's a delayed draw, and it is smothered. All the way back at the 11-yard line. Ronnie Harmon was buried by the Penn State defense, and that play did not look very smooth from the ground. Well, that was, they, they guessed wrong. Penn State flitzed on that play. They thought Penn State was going to drop the pass. Now watch him come. You see Garrett, 99. Penetration coming from all over. White's coming from the outside. They just guessed wrong. Good penetration. Here's Oscar Ball to punt out of his end zone. Woods, oh, little shaky, he fumbles, it's loose, and Penn State recovers. Mike Zornitz fell on the football. Kevin Woods looked shaky right from the goal. Should have never tried it. the field to punt. They're in good field position. Should have went for the fair, should have gone for the fair catch, you see? Look how close the Iowa people are to him. He's a reckless kid, but he can get hurt that way. They were very fortunate, Penn State. I come up with that fumble recovery. Jonathan Hayes, the tight end, who is from Pennsylvania, South Bay area, is the man who hit Woods after he had touched the ball. Nonetheless, Penn State in good shape at their own 48. Frank, looking to the sideline, incomplete, intended for Bellamy. Again, we had two receivers in the area along with Domitio. Broken pattern for sure, Stan. Yeah, the two receivers almost running shoulder pad to shoulder pad. Trey in the incompletion. Penn State really has been an excellent field position the entire second half, but they have not been able to move in for a score, although because of their good field position, the game has been played in Iowa's territory all day. But they need to take advantage. Manoa and Clark behind Strang. This is Clark. 50. Drives into Iowa territory at the 46-yard line. So a good six-yard run by David Clark, who had a nice first half. It'll be third down and four yards to go. Good tough running. There's a counter here. All right, Rob Smith does a good job. Actually, Strobel come up field too much. Clark runs tough. Stray, eight out of 22. One touchdown, two interceptions. And he may have to throw here on third down and four from the Iowa 46. That's Clark to a wing left. Off the screen, overthrown from Manoa. Not a good play by Doug Strang, although Rob Smith was late getting out of the block, and I don't know if Manoa's going to the Oh, uh, yeah, you don't know what he would have made it, but he almost threw that into the defensive back's hands up. Well, Penn State has wasted the scoring opportunities with this exceptional field position. Once again, it will be John Bruno who will try to keep Iowa deep in their territory. Bruno did an exceptional job of that last week, and it was a major factor in Penn State beating Rutgers. High in the air, Smith will let it go over his head, bounding into the end zone. Oh, it's a 46-yard punt, but Iowa will take over on its 20-yard line. 5.33 to play in the third quarter. There's a timeout of the action to score. Penn State 13, Iowa 10. We'll be back right after this. And at Q15, after the Penn State interception, the teams exchange punts. 
Iowa has the ball. At a Q16. After the Penn State interception, the teams exchange punts, and we pick up the action with Penn State holding possession. First and ten, Hawkeyes, their own 20-yard line. Long, the short roll to the flat, and it is caught, and a very nice catch at the 34-yard line. Pass caught by Halverson. It is good for a 14-yard gain in Iowa, first down. They execute this very well. It's just, Halverson just does a now the single coverage. He drills the ball, he comes back to the ball, the receiver comes back, makes a nice diving catch. Can't stop that. 14-yard gain, and we've got a penalty on Penn State on top of it. Is this another? I don't know. I think it's maybe roughing the passer. Well, yes, and they're going to take the gain instead, or the penalty instead of the gain. The gain was 14, the penalty is 15. Roughing the passer is indeed the call. It is not tacked on, so they'll get the extra yard, so it's not uh, critical. We just keep waiting the Iowa offense to explode. Penn State's offense has not been able to take advantage of a good performance by the Penn State defense. First and ten. Long. Firing again to the flat, and it is caught. At the 47-yard line, that'll be good for another... Iowa first down, and again, it is Helverson. Well, not Helverson on the reception. Notice the first down plays. Now they got a pattern on Penn State. They're getting single coverage on the flanker. He's just running the out pattern. You see it? That's pretty good coverage by Sinda. But watch out for him to fake that and send the receiver deep. This is what they like to do. Sometimes you don't realize what a chess game goes on in the opposing coaches group. First and ten, Iowa. There he goes. Long. Going to run. Beats a tackler. 45, 40, 35, and runs out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Chuck Long doing a great job of running. Beat a man in the open field and picks up big yardage, 22 yards, from the Penn State 31. Well, Long does a good job here. He's got the corner. He sees the defensive end drop off. Tucks the ball away and shows that he can run pretty good. He's got a missed tackle over here. And off he goes down the sidelines into Penn State's territory. Heads up play by Chuck Long. 4.50 to play in the third quarter. Penn State clinging now to a three-point lead. Harmon gets outside. Makes it move. 25-20. Still on his feet. To the 17-yard line, the flag is down. The flanker back, Helgeson, come back and block back on the cornerback. Be a clip against Iowa. Let's see if we can see it here. Let's take a look at the, the top left of your screen. They were hold, the cornerback was trying to get back. Helgeson was hanging on to him. The flag is thrown. So that will cost Iowa yardage and it negates a 15-yard run by Ronnie Harmon. But you see that Iowa is starting to get some kind of a plan here now. They're throwing on first down. They come back with the sweep to Harmon, uh, trying to use the speed to get to the outside. They might have given up trying to get up inside against Penn State because they have not been successful. 10-yard penalty on the Hawkeyes. It'll be first down and 20. 4.43 to play in the first quarter. So it's long yardage, but with Iowa, it's really, really not very critical. They can make that up quickly. Come to a pro set on first and 20. Straight drop. Over the middle. Jonathan Hayes incomplete. Boy, what a good solid hit on Jonathan Hayes. And that enabled... Penn State to get the incompletion. Ray Ison really stuck Jonathan Hayes, and he is still feeling the effect. That is a great hit. I mean, he just came to him as the ball came to the, to the receiver and really put a shot on him. Ray Ison is a sophomore from Harrisburg. 5'9", 180 pounds, but he sure packed the wallop there. Jonathan Hayes, by the way, talking about David and Goliath, is 6'5", and 240. And he'll remember it next time he comes in that area, though. 
second and 20 at the Penn State 41. Ronnie Harmon on a wing left. You've got to watch him. Long to the flat. It is overthrown and incomplete. The pass intended for Harmon. Drew Bikoski came up on coverage. Ball overthrown. Incomplete third and 20. Good pressure by the Penn State defensive line with only a four-man rush. Now watch. You get, they're getting a push here. They're getting a push where they're closing the pocket down on him. Good coverage. That's more than number 90 coming to the inside. Long overthrows him. Well, again, it's third down and long yardage situation. Sometimes they're more frightening when they're third and long when they're our first and ten. Or, right? or third and one sometimes. Third down, 20. Quinn Early comes wide to the right. Helverson, wide left. Here comes a blitz. Here comes a blitz up the middle, long. Watch the screen. It is caught. But Harmon is dropped at the 39 yard line and out of field goal range. It's a good call by Iowa. But the pass, although complete, gains just a couple to Owen Gill. It'll be fourth down, 18 yards to go, and it should force Iowa to punt. That was a great play by Chris Collins. I guess. I think it was Chris. Let's take a look. Now watch how the defender takes down the interference and still gets in on the tackle. Right there, flipped his ankle with his left hand. That is Chris Collins, and a great play by Collins, a sophomore from Carnegie PA. We're going to try a field goal. It'd be a 56-yard field goal. It's up. It's long enough, and it is no good. I'll tell you, he just missed. He had plenty of right distance, plenty of distance. And the wind has died down, so it really wasn't a win, ain't it? Well, it's a break for Penn State because they get the ball at the 39-yard line, and, of course, it keeps them in the lead with 327 to play. I could imagine if the kid had that kind of leg. But I mean, this is such a great defensive game. It's a question, who's going to crack? I mean, I, I said at the beginning of the second half, probably somebody's going to get one big play, and that will decide the game. Well, that was a big defensive series for Penn State because that's the only time I was able to drive on them all in the second half. First and 10, Nippon Lions are on 39. Tim Manoa. He's hit in the backfield. He'll lose two. Back to the 37 round line. Iowa defense getting great penetration. Pat Peterson, middle guard, has played a great football game. Well, they pull a guard Smith and they key in him, and his penetration by the inside linebacker, but they had that play defense. I think Penn State's best chances are to go straight up into the inside, try to four or five yard in the depth. In a 5-2 defense, a lot of times, the middle guard will just follow the guard when he pulls. Figures they'll run into the play sooner or later. Second and 12. Strang over the middle. He's got his man. It's up at the 50-yard line, and that'll be good for a first down. Strang really drilled the bullet to Dean DeVideo, his second catch of the game. It's a 13-yard gain and a Penn State first down. Well, that's the type of short passing game that we were talking about. you got to start hitting those short turn-ins, turn-outs, about 10 yards right on the marker. He knew where it was. Smart heads-up football by DeVideo, first time. you got to hit those short ones before you can even think about going deep. First and 10, Penn State at midfield. David Clark. He'll lose a yard. What a flag, though. Probably holding. Flag down to the play. George Little from Duquesne, PA, outside of Pittsburgh, makes the tackle. Here's the call. Holding. Penn State. That'll cost him 10. Well, that certainly can neutralize the drive. It's certainly to Iowa. Because Ronnie Harmon's 15-yard run had them with a first down at the Penn State 17. Instead, they were back at the 41, first and 20. Penalties are like bases on balls, as they say, they kill you. You know, they, well, that's uh, an entirely different. It gives the defense an opportunity to change their defensive plan and stuff. But I still think Penn State will have to throw the ball to win the game. Well, Iowa may be deciding not to take it. It would be second down and 11, or would they rather have it first and 20? I thought so. First and 20. They'll accept the penalty. Uh, second 11 is not, you know, that much yardage to make up. Well, then it was not holding. No, well, illegal it was use of hands. Illegal use of hands. That's what it is. All right. So it's five yards. That wise, I don't know. I'm, I thought I'd rather have second 11 or first and 15. Well, uh, six and one half a dozen the other. They come back here. I, I personally, I think I would have gone for the second 11. But you want to move them back from field goal range. That's probably the motive. 
Brian Rowley, he's got That's room. If he wants to run, he throws. He's got his man. It is caught by Campbell at the Iowa 42-yard line, close to the 41. Keith Hunter made the tackle, but it's a strong gain of 14, 13 yards, and it puts Penn State picking up the penalty plus additional yardage. Well, that, this is the best formation I have. Two receivers on one side. He gets the corner. Now, as he goes to run, they loosen up in the secondary, and Campbell just curls in, and the ball's there. Nice play. Forward progress at the 41, so it is a 14-yard gain. Second and one at the 40. You got it down to fool with if you care to. One minute, 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Penn State leading 13-10. Clark, first down and then some inside to the 35-yard line. But David Clark getting his first opportunity to play in his career at Penn State. Takes up a first down. We've got a Penn State player injured. You know, uh, uh, Iowa came with the both inside linebackers. He almost ran right by him. Uh, Spitzik was fortunate enough to recover and put him down. He was into the secondary. Jeff, Jeff Woofter is the man down on the play. Jeff is a senior from New Cumberland, West Virginia. <laughs> senior at 6'4", 265. Well, Penn State will have a first down at the Iowa 35-yard line. A minute and 31 seconds to play in the third quarter. And if Penn State should go in and get a touchdown here, by no means the game over, but now you can really play some defense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If, if they can continue this type of defense and have a 10-point lead, it gives you all kinds of other options you can do. You can be a lot more reckless, you know, in certain passing situations. They're looking at Jeff's ankle. Taking a look at that. Stan Clayton, the freshman from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, is in the lineup. Freshman at 6'3", 250 pounds. This is a key drive, and you can tell by the look on Joe Paterno's face that he is well aware of that. Key drive in the football game. Tied of possession. Penn State had a two-minute advantage in the first half, and they have really held on to the football here in the third quarter. Well, as I say, that's, that's what you talk about uh, when you hear all the commentators and coaches talk about ball possession. This looks bad, George. Uh, uh, you know, it's a shame because he has been plagued by injuries. And, you know, this is his senior year. He hasn't played in the previous year because he has been injured. And he thought this was going to be a big year for him. I hope it's not serious. Well, we'll hope it's only a sprain as opposed to any kind of a bone chip or fracture. Stan Clayton, the freshman, is at his position at guard. First down 10, Penn State at the Iowa 35-yard line. Manoa, big hole, 30, and gets inside the 30 to 27, 26-yard line. Devon Mitchell made the tackle. But when your free safeties are making tackle, you're in trouble. I tell you, he got great blocking from Conlon and Smith, though. Wait, wait, watch it now. They just rolled their people out. How about and the first Clayton? He did his job, too. They're right out in front of the ball carrier. Good cut by Mano. He's doing a little better job finding the open area this week. Clayton blew out the All-American linebacker, Larry Station. Second down. And then large yard and a half to go for a first down. Spray. Over the middle, and it's caught for a first down at the 16-yard line. Eric Campbellton has really come into his own today. He is stopped by Hunter, but it's a good nine-yard completion for a first down. All right, now just a little post turn in pattern, but the thing about it, they're operating with confidence. They're not afraid to drill that ball, and that's the Dougie Strang we saw the last eight nine games. We put that right on the nine. It's amazing how Strang, through his own performance, has lifted and drawn this offense together. First and 10 at the 16. Clark. Maybe a yard to the 15-yard line. Not much there. You'd like to get a bit more on first down than just one. He's doing a lot of audibleizing on the line of scrimmage almost every play. That time, he didn't pick it up. If he had to run a short side sweep, Iowa overshifted to the wide side of the field. They were in good position for that, but they could have been hurt with a short side sweep. And that will be the last play of the third quarter. 15 minutes of football to play. The end of the third quarter, the score. Penn State 13, Iowa 10. We'll be back right after this. Right after this. Second down and nine yards to go. 
Manoa and Clark in an eye behind Doug Strang. Campbell with motion. Strang's in trouble. He's looking. He fires in the end zone. It is incomplete. And a flag on the play. We may have an appearance call on Iowa. In, now remember, it will only be half the distance to the goal line. Well, he's got a... Well, we'll see what side he draws on. They went for all the marbles. They had a corner blitz, a little blitz here, which actually took Dougie out of what he wanted to do, and he, he had to rush the ball a little bit. Let's see here. It's a free ball. I don't know. That'd be a tough interference call. It could have been interference on either party. Either way, I, I mean, I, I would have to say that was not a good draw against Iowa. That, that's a free ball. The defensive back has as much right to it when it's in the air as the offensive back. I agree, George. They will give him the football at the two-yard line. Well, you know, this could be the ball game. Uh, this is the area Penn State has difficulty. Let's take a look. Uh, unless he pushed them before we got the camera on him, I don't know. But it looked like it was a, a free ball and that the defensive back had a right to go for it. Nate Creer is the man guilty, but I don't know how guilty he was. I appeal to a higher court. First and goal at the two-yard line for the Nittany Lions. Clark, good block. Clark. Stop. At about the six-inch line. Good block by Tim Manoa, but also a good defensive play. Stop Clark shy. Well, he's not the fastest back, but he did the, the, the right thing. He saw he had a little bit of the corner and took whatever he could get. He didn't get nifty, you see? A real good block there by 44. Now watch him die for it. He just missed it on about the two-inch line, three-inch line. That's a great defensive play by Kevin Spitzer. That's a great defensive play. Second down and goal. And you notice Penn State is not using the power eye this time. Strang, quarterback sneak, touchdown, Penn State. Doug Strang in the quarterback sneak, and the Nittany Lions have driven for their second touchdown of the game. They got a great surge in the interior part of the line. For quarterback against a goal line defense like that to get that much penetration, that means that center, the both guards and tackle converge, wedged in there, and drove the defenders back. 61-yard drive for Penn State. And now Gansatana will attempt a very important extra point. A lot of time to play. 14-10 to play in the football game. But Penn State again with the extra point, has a 10-point lead. 20 to 10, with 14, 10 to play in the football game, as the time out of the action is scored. Penn State 20, Iowa 10. We'll be back right after this. And at June 18. After Strange's touchdown to increase Penn State's lead, the Hawkeyes have the ball. Edit 19. Edit 19. After Strange's touchdown and increased Penn State to lead, Penn State has the ball again. That could be the making of the squad right there. Joe always said, you never could tell a team a good team until they win, they win it in the fourth quarter. This might be the making of no call. It's no call. No, it's no, no call. No Penn State increasing their lead to 10 points at 20 to 10, but a lot of time to play. 14 minutes, 10 seconds to play in the football game. Mango kick off to Harmon on the far side. And Robert Smith on the near side. And of course, you remember what happened the last time Penn State kicked off. Harmon returned it and almost broke it all the way. Bank is kicked this time will come to Smith. Five yards deep, he will stay there. So Penn State, with the wind at their back in the fourth quarter, although that has not proven to be much of a factor thus far, will send its defensive unit out in the game. And, you know, George, it's almost watching, or like watching, a rose bloom in time-lapse photography this Penn State offense. Maybe so, but as I, you know, Joe once said he can't consider a team a real good one unless they can win a ball game in the fourth quarter. If they can win this game, this could be the coming together of a really fine football team for Penn State. 61-yard drive with most impressive 14 plays, 
very steady, and it kept Iowa's offense on the sideline. First and 10, Hawkeyes, they're 20. Long with a play fake to the sideline. It is caught, but it'll be good for a yard game. Chris Sidnor really playing a strong football game. Jonathan Hayes, the tight end, the man who made the catch, but it'll be good for just a one-yard game. And a face mask on Penn State. Well, then these penalties, they just heard Iowa. Now, this is great. Sidnor's never played this well before. We acted awfully well. Chris Collins. Collins come in and grab the face mask. It's a non-intentional penalty, so you only get the five. So it'll be first down and four yards to go. And it's unfortunate for Chris Collins because the tackle had already been made. So it's first down and four instead of second down and nine. And a six-yard penalty almost. First down. That could be an indication of Hard and Fry's strategy. He might he doesn't want to kill the clock too much, and he might go right to a, a total passing game. Bush, the fullback, breaks a tackle, drives across the 30, out to the 32, that'll be good for an Iowa first down. Fred Bush, the fullback, has picked up some key yardage for the Hawkeyes this afternoon. Uh, he's a big, strong fullback. He's about 235. They, they elected to go for the first down, smart, get the first down, and he bulled his way for enough yardage. Interestingly enough, Joe Paterno continues to substitute people. We see the Rich Cousy's in the ball game. Ray Isom has played most of the way at safety. Darrell Giles has not played since the first quarter. He's got Giannetti in there for uh, White, too. Right. Garrett is in a defensive tackle. Here's the get inside the push, but this time he'll get a couple off of the 34-yard line. And a good play by Don Giannetti. Giannetti is a sophomore, 6'1", 220 pounds, from Poland. Yeah, he's Ohio. Ohio. Not he's an Warsaw. Italian from Poland, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> Don Jetty, Poland, Ohio. But he uh, he's a fine player, and he's given the, the opportunity to rest his two starting defensive ends, uh, uh, White and uh, uh, Morgan. Second down, eight yards to go. 12-45 to play in the game. Long, no pressure, no run. Cuts inside, out to the 38-yard line. Gain of four, it'll be third down and four yards to go. But I just said before, Fry has to make a decision pretty soon now. In those two series of downs, they almost killed the clock for four minutes. Now he needs two scores to tie or win this football game. Well, wait a minute, George. They got the ball back with 14 10, so they only used up two minutes on the clock. Oh, I thought that was 10. I'm sorry. I'm no. Sure. That's how many points they've got. Well, I get the camera out of my way. Here's, uh, yeah, who needs a camera? Third down and four. Obviously a big play. Bulls almost jumps that. off. Pass to the sideline, and it is. They rule it a catch. It'll be an Iowa first down. Diving catch by Bill Happel. And it will be good for the Iowa first down. And obviously, had they not made it, Penn State would have right. got the ball back. Again, they do this real well. This is the sideline. They catch single coverage over there. That's not bad defense. They're willing to give a few of those. Give them a few of those. You can see that Iowa's receivers are so well coached. We've seen them make several catches along the sideline, dragging that foot. Well, Harmon just came in number 31. He's the kind of a guy that frightens me. I mean, you got to watch him. He's a big flame. Well, if Iowa's going to score, certainly Penn State would like to take a lot of time in doing so. But a one-quick play, now you're in trouble again. That was a big catch there by Happel. Otherwise, Penn State would have gotten the ball back. Robert Smith in motion. Here's the reverse to Robert Smith. One man. He gets outside him to the 40, 35 left out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That was all Robert Smith. He made a great one-on-one move in the corner, and he picks up big, big yardage to the Penn State 30-yard line. Well, they got a great field block by Flash. They think... They're saying he stepped out. Now, uh, Smith makes a good run of it, but watch. They had a field block by Flash. The guard and these came around, peeled back in on the corner, man. They uh, went to get outside, but they bring it back. What? They ruled that he was out of bounds. That was 43. That'll take 15 yards off his run, but good for yardage nonetheless. The now, move? the chains are in the wrong place. They're going to have to stop this until they get the chains in position. They got the chains going backwards. Yeah. It's a first down for Iowa. No, it's not. It's going to be second down and about two. Well, that's what they did that for to see how much resistance they have. Wait a minute. 
The line of scrimmage was the 44. That is a first down, as I said, the first call. So it's first down and 10 at the Penn State 43. This is the second week in a row. I guess the officials are a little rusty, too. They moved them to change back the other way, although they had the marker at one, which means first down. And it is a first down at the Penn State 43. Long fires is incomplete. Overthrown for tight end Jonathan Hayes. But Long can cause that if we can see it. Long felt the pressure from the backside. You don't have to see it. He, he felt in the back of his uh, eyes, like in the back of his helmet, right here. He sees Morgan coming. He got rid of the ball a lot quicker than he wanted. He had no zip on it. And he got pressure in his face. So Penn State, with a bookend blitz, forces the incompletion. It is second down and 10 yards to go. Frankly, if you're clock watching, it's much too early. 11.51 to play in the game. Penn State's lead is 10, 20 to 10. Slot to the right. Gill behind Long, who's dropping the ball. Over the middle, and it is caught. Wide open is J.C. Jordan Love at the 25. Love Jordan, as is completely is J.C. Love Jordan, picks up big yardage. 18 yards and a first down at the Penn State uh, Penn, Penn State blitz, Iowa pick up. It's the first time they really got hurt trying to put the rush on. You see Jordan coming down in the course, makes a fine catch. All their receivers are very dangerous in open field. Well, you don't want to get a linebacker like Donnie Graham was on J.C. Love Jordan, a receiver with great speed. There are long statistics. He's got a first down at the Penn State 25. Owen Gill hit hard, but still managed to get a couple down to the 24-yard line. Zordich made the tackle. Let's call it a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight yards to go for the first down. Right now, Penn State's defense, the people are saying, bend but don't break. You know, don't give them the big one. They're going to hit a play like that once in a while. Keep the pressure on against the run. And try to get them in passing situations and we'll try to be in the right defense. Well, Penn State has substituted well on defense, and really they've had a great rush in the second half. Well, they got the first, the starting unit on defense back in there now. Second down and eight. Long, he missed the tackle, and Long drives inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. That was Bob Onco, 93, just, he wasn't in a good position. He overran the play, he was in a great position to, to seal Long up from the inside. Now, you can't do that. These two days, right there, you see Onco overrun the play. He never had control over his body. Left his feet. So Long turns a two-yard loss into a five-yard gain. It is third down, two yards to go. Ten minutes, 15 seconds to play in the game. 32. Here's Harmon. Breaks a tackle. Inside the 10. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. And Ronnie Harmon did it all himself. He broke tackles. He made tackles miss. And he picks up 15 yards at a first down. Well, he got a good force on the corner here. Well, watch this cut. See that great back right there? They got a beautiful cut. Then he goes into high gear, starts running away from Signal. Gets forced out by Ice. First down and goal. Iowa at the two-yard line. And a great drive for the Hawkeyes. They started at their own 20. After... Penn State has scored a touchdown. It seems that every time Penn State scores a touchdown, Iowa gets mad and scores one. Iowa from the power eye. First and goal from the two. Quarterback sneak. Chuck Long. Touchdown. Chuck Long, the quarterback sneak, and Iowa can move to it in three. Get, get that, make that run where he only had two to go, and then Ronnie Harmon showing, doing his thing, showing why he's a great performer. Tom Nickel, who has a field goal in it, is knocked out of nine on extra points this year. He will attempt to bring the Hawkeyes within three. He does so. Ten minutes, one second to play in this football game. There's a timeout of the action to score. Penn State 20, Iowa 17. We'll be back right after this. And a Q20. Following the Iowa touchdown, the Lions have the ball. 
and a key 21. Following the Iowa touchdown, we move to further action in the fourth quarter with the Hawkeyes in control again. Can't take it. Boy, this is fourth quarter. We've got long stats up on the scoreboard if you guys want to you know. play in this football game. Nickel will kick off. You ice him on the far side. Kevin Woods on the near side. So once again, Penn State's offense will have to move the football. Nickel's kick is a line driver. It goes past the up man. It goes past everyone. Let it go in the end zone. And Woods will fall on it and they'll get a touchback. Now again, the Iowa fans we're of the opinion that it touched the Penn State up man. It did not. So Penn State will get the ball in the 20 and uh, impending disaster has passed by. Well, I'll tell you, when he squibs and he squibs and that ball is going in nine different directions at the same time. All right, once again, it's up. Now the onus and the pressure's gone to the offensive team. Our Penn State can generate a few first downs as they did before. They, they're still in pretty good shape. Fans are not happy with the officiating. The interference call, they had a legitimate complaint. I don't think they had one on this occasion. It's up to the Penn State offensive line specifically, and that's not a good way to start. Jumping offside, I believe it was Rob Smith, to let it put Penn State in a position where it's first and 15. Here's what, why a coach gets frightened when he's got too many young people in there. You got sophomore Smith, you got a freshman Clayton. You know, you got to settle them down. Now they start getting up tight a little bit in these situations. So the penalty is on Penn State. Watch the movement. Rob Smith, number yeah, 79. He just fired out. He missed the count. When, he, when, when they're at that, you know, intently offside, that dramatically offside, they've missed the count. First and 15. It's not the place you want to be first and 15. Unless you pick up big yardage on first down, eventually you're going to have to pass deep in your own territory. They might try to get the ball at tight end. The fumble, fumble a snap, Swing is up with it, and he'll lose another yard. Now, it wasn't so much that he fumbled a snap, but rather, they didn't know what the snap count was. I think Hayden gave him the ball before he called for it. Well, they certainly... Let's see here what happens. There's a... That's right. The ball came up. He was looking to his left. He wasn't ready for it. And I'll tell you what, George, everybody on the offensive line moved with the snap of the ball, so that means that it was Swan who didn't know the count. Well, I don't think the noise is that bad that it should be getting it, getting to them, but the... Uh, well, now they're in a definite passing situation. And Strang is asking the official for quiet. Strang is asking the official to keep it down. And now some of the Iowa defensive players are signaling with their hands to keep it down. Oh, the Hawkeye fans smell blood as well they should. Do what you got to do there after the touchback. You come out, you run a nice play, you regain momentum. But the offside still, there's Smith. something wrong there. That's that second and 15 on the scoreboard. Oh, it's first down. Right. Yeah, they got the first down. And then they pulled the down. Yeah, it was first and first. Well, they, hit, they still have two down. They, they, they're going to have to throw the football. Now well, comes the noise again. They might, they might try to go deeper. Green, no run. They'll get out to the 20. And they'll pick up five. It'll still be third down and 10 yards to go. 
Larry Stapes made the tackle. I think Strang had it in his mind all the way. I think he made up his mind all the way, and I think that he had the curl man there. Uh, you know, open. Uh, so right away, as soon as he got the block from Schmidt, he decided to take off on his own. And there's Station, who they think is an All-American linebacker. He can even finish the Well, this will be most uh, interesting. Of course, D.J. Dozier, the big play man, has not played, nor will he. And it'll be interesting to see if Penn State will throw the ball on third and 10 from their own 20 or punt it away and hope their defense can do the job. Uh, you know, you come to win. I think that's well. Here we go. He's got it. Got his man, and it is incomplete at the 33-yard line. Mumford was open. The pass was low. Mumford had it for a minute, but then he dropped it. And boy, is that a big play. It should have been a first down. Well, uh, let's see here. Rush is the ball now. Luke, yeah, it hit the ground first. Had the man open for the first time. Now it's all on the defense. Now Bruno will be kicking with the win. Good punt by John Bruno. Good punt. Smith over the shoulder of the sturdy. Breaks a tackle. He's in the open. Look out. And he fumbles. The ball's loose. Bruno's got it. He cannot advance it, but Penn State's recovered. Punter John Bruno recovered the fumble. We'll look at the replay and see who made the hit. Because Smith very nearly broke it out of the way. I'll tell you, there's an old action saying you better be lucky than good. And now this is a break. This is a great run. These kids can run. Watch them. Now, he doesn't see. He gets blindsided. See? Right, there it is. Out comes the football. He has Duffy it in the wrong Cox. hand. Duffy Cox, defensive back. And ever alert Bruno picks it up on the hop. But you're lucky to get a hop like that. Well, eight minutes exactly to play. A timeout in the action. The score. Penn State 20. Iowa 17. We'll be right back after this. Well, Strang ever once will be considered a great quarterback. Now he's going to have to do it. He got them unsettled there. What's out for that comment? That goal. Iowa player is shaken up on the play, and it is Robert Smith. And as you mentioned, George, they have got a stable of running back slash wideout to our just fabulous open field runner. I mean, you can look at it on one side and say four tackling, but I'm sorry. These are just great running backs. But the big thing and the difference is when Penn State gets a chance to hit them, they're really hitting them and they're popping the ball. In. First and 10, Penn State, their own 46 after a monumental break. Steve Smith picks up a yard in 47. Now, they're going to have to do better than that because here's a chance to drive the ball even if you don't get a score. Pick up two first downs. That's four minutes on the clock, which now reads 7:45 to play. Well, uh, this, this should be this should be a passing down or a screen. I mean, they have got to come. They played so well against a really fine football team. Uh, you can't you can't go you know uh, go into a shell now. You got to come to win the football. Second and nine. Mumford gets a hole and drives through a very nice run to the Iowa 47. It'll be third down and a bit more than two yards to go for the first down. And you get two first downs here, George Allen, and you eat up the clock with your field goal range. All right, that was a great play. They double team Hufford. He made a good cut on that. Just a straight handle. Penn State will come with two tight ends as John Walter comes into the game. Hamilton and Mumford goes out. Tony Stacks, 32 yards and 10 carries, and he's got some tough yardage inside. Well, they got the two tough running backs in there, Clark and you know. Here is a key play, third down and two. Clark cuts up field, he will not get there. In fact, no game. And that is an awfully big third down defensive play by Iowa. It'll be fourth down. Penn State elected to go outside. Now, Clark takes it up to the inside, tries to get outside. There's no running room. Stopped by Iowa's excellent defense. Well, now they will rely on Bruno once again to get his field position. Robert Smith, shaken up after he fumbled the last punt, is back deep at his 11. Bruno looks for the corner. Gets it way up in the air. It bounces at the 5, takes a Penn State bounce. It'll be down at the 10-yard line. Drew by Costi, who's been a cyclone on special teams all this year. Downs the 
ball at the 10-yard line. 6.03 to play in the game. Iowa needs three to tie. They'll look for a touchdown. Well, the Hawkeyes have a long way to go. And the Penn State defense once again called upon. Well, we've got, we got 90 yards to go in six minutes. First down from the 10. Long, rolling, he's got room to run. He makes a great move. And he's knocked out of bounds at 25. A 15-yard game. Shane Condon in position, but Long takes him out of his shoes. He took the pump fake. When you've got a quarterback coming out on the corner like that, you just got to level up. You can't go with the fake. Now watch him here. He just fakes out Conlon. Right here. The fourth stumbles. He's a good running back. First down. 10. It was a 12 yard game. They ruled he was out of bounds at the 22. First down and 10. Gill got room, but a good defensive play by Mike Sardis. He's played a strong game. He holds him to a two yard game. It'll be second down and eight yards to go. The clock running with five minutes and 40 seconds to play. Now, now this is a sprint out floor. He makes a beautiful cut, but a great adjustment by Zordich, filling the hole from his monster position, his hero position. You see, they ran the sprint out, they roll out, then they come back, giving it to the tailback, hoping the defense is contained, opens up the hole. And the tackle did a nice job of letting Dan Morgan run himself out of the play. Second and eight. Ball, watch the screen, there it is. It's complete, but Harmon is hitting drop at the 26-yard line. Zordich and Chris Collins make the tackle. Uh, that was a, also, they sandwiched him here. Collins read it from Iowa's side of the line of scrimmage. That was a good fake. Long does this very well. They're trying to get Ronnie Harmon in open field for the obvious reason. Now, right there, here comes Zordich going in on screen. Third down. This could be the ball game right here. Clock is under five minutes to play. Third down and six. There's a blitz. Long is hit. He throws anywhere in his cup. Mm -hmm. But, ah, they break the tackle. He's only go for the first down. They had him short when he first down, but he picks it up by half a yard. And Long threw while a Penn State defender was draped all over him. What a big play that was by yeah. both Long and Gill. Penn State's gotten some breaks. Now Iowa gets a break. With the blitz on, he did this last year. He does a good job. Got he gets down. it off to Gill. We come back to him. Drain just didn't finish him off. And he made the first one. Onko had Gill at the 30, which was two yards shy. But he broke away from Onko, picked up three, and got the first down by half a yard. The clock running, 4-10 to play in the game. Long going over the middle, and it is caught for a first down at the 47-yard line by Bill Happer. Another Iowa first down. The clock will not help Penn State. Penn State has got to help themselves. Well, that's just great execution. Drop that pass, four-man rush. Now, he's surrounded by, by white jerseys. Now, watch the way Long put it in between all of them. All right, good reception, good hit by Sue. Iowa. At the cone, 48 yard line. Three minutes and 45 seconds to play in the game. The first. Robert Smith breaks one tackle, but cannot break the tackle of Bob White. Harmon is stopped at the Penn State 48 yard line. A game of four. It'll be second down and six. Well, he can scoop. Lance Hamilton makes a great play here. Now watch. They fake the Harmon. Now watch. Here comes Smith, a young. And then ha Hamilton turned the play right back into the defensive end. Nice play. Second down six. Second down six. As Iowa moves close to the field goal position. Penn State needs a big play defensively. Long rolling, throws in a flat, and it is caught. 
for a first down at the Penn State 38 yard line. Scott Helverson makes the reception, and Iowa just moving down the field quick as you please. Well, Penn State's playing a little short, but they do this so well. This is just first down, and here goes the flanker on that out pattern. Notice how they have to come back to the ball where he's going to to the defender to get near. Two minutes and 50 seconds in play. Iowa with two timeouts left. Here's Herman. It's outside, but he runs out of bounds at the 37-yard line. It's a gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. Well, he sure gets to the corner in a hurry, doesn't yeah, he, George? He, 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 he lets him make his move here. He's going to try to get off tackle here for a second. And he broke it outside behind him, the big fullback. And then he uses his head and gets out of bounds to stop the cut. They still have a long way to go. But Penn State just stays in the game, doesn't panic, plays their defense. It's going to be tough for Iowa to get in. Well, you can bet that Iowa's not thinking field goal. They want a touchdown to win this game. 2.37 to play, second and nine from the Penn State 37 yard line. Long calling it audible. Give off. Harmon again beats a tackler. Gets inside the 35 and down to the 34 yard line. Man, he is making Penn State's linebackers miss. And these are very good Penn State linebackers. Well, this is Conlon. This is a check off. And they, they went back to the same play. Now, he jumps out of the tackle here. Watch this. See, Conlon try to nail him ankle low. Jumps out of it. But they still, they'll be content to hold him before five yards of the clip. Penn State player. There is Tom Nickel. He has really shown that he has an amazing leg. He tried a 56-yarder and was wide, but he had the distance. This is fullback Fred Bush, who is down in the play. 2.31 to play in the game, a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 20, Iowa 17. We'll be back right after this. Third and two, didn't make it. Third and six, they had long, and they had good. Oh, good thing. Gill's a good running back. Oh, sure. Just, well, they're not used to tackling anybody that good so far. I mean, they, you know, they're letting them slip the road too much. 2.31 to play in the game. Fred Bush, Iowa's fullback, a junior, 6'1", 229 pounds, is being helped off the field. Well, Stan, they'll miss him because the he's blocking good. great blocks in those feet. His replacement will be Tim Senek, also a junior, 6 feet, 215 pounds. And they say that football is a series of third downs. It is third down and five for Iowa at the Penn State 34. If they hold them, Iowa would be forced into trying over a 50-yard field goal at the time. I don't think they will. I think that he's thinking this. I got two downs to make five. And I'm sure that he's coming. You know, they want to win the football game. So if they make a mistake, you know, it could be all over. Either team makes a mistake. Here's the rollout, as I suspected. Long makes the move. Another one. He's close to the first down. He's going to be a bit short. He's going to be about a half a yard short. Again, Penn State had a chance to get him in the backfield. They missed him. It'll be fourth down, less than a yard to go. You can bet Iowa will go for it. But that's Anko again. He overran him. When you got a quarterback, you got to keep him to your on your outside shoulder then so you can get to the cutback. He's overrunning him. I'm surprised that they're you know, keeping Bob in there right now. He can, he's only a sophomore. Well, we're going to get a timeout. It's fourth down and less than a yard to go. Now, now let's take a look at it. Now, watch. Now, Juan is looking for the run. Now, watch Anto from the hit. See, he overruns him again. You cannot do that. You must keep the ball put carries on your shoulder to be in a position to adjust to the cutback. Iowa with a bit less than a yard to go. You see the distance there on the far sideline. Now, what you have to be afraid of here with the game breakers they have, maybe Hayden Fry goes for the gamble. You're expecting a short yard. If you go to a short uh, yardage goal line defense and boom, like they Doug Flutie did last week against Alabama. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if, if, if Hamilton's out, so you got a new defensive back in there. You know, you, you see a great football game, and it's probably coming down to this one play. This could be the football game. Two minutes 
and five seconds to play. Penn State leading by a field goal. Fourth down and a yard to go for a first down. Motion, here's a pitch wide, and it's gonna be close, Hartman may have been stopped short. If they gave him to where his knee hit, it all depends on the spot. Well, they marked it forward, George. They marked it forward. Now, Ray Isom is saying that Penn State held him. Uh, they, they, those, don't listen to watch the players. I mean, you got to. Sure, I know that. I thought he gave him a forward spot on the ball, to tell you the uh, truth. His knee hit. If his knee, it's question when the ball hit first or his knee hit first. Here's the ball game right here. They'll stretch him. And Penn State has held him on defense. Fourth and one, they missed it by half a yard. Well, wow. with 1.53 to play, Penn well, State. Give Iowa credit, they came down the field. Now, that was just great defense because they, they gave the ball to a great back and they rose to the occasion on it. Uh, key here is that in that drive, Iowa did not use a timeout. They have two timeouts left, so Penn State cannot run out the clock unless they pick up a first down. One first down, Penn State wins the game. Well, they'll try to get the first down and at least try it if they don't pin them back deep again. They're going to be awfully careful here. They're at their own 29. Mumford, perhaps a half a yard. Well, half to half a yard. Iowa will let the clock run. Now they will use the timeout. Well, the big thing about a, a series like that is you make the other team use their first downs, and when they get the ball back, it makes it that much more difficult difficult for them to move the ball. 144 to play. One timeout left for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Third period, Nebraska 31, Minnesota nothing. <laughs> There's not a great deal of strategy here. You want your running backs to stay inbound. Obviously, you pick up a first down, the game's over, but you... Well, you know they're going to jam the inside, right? So the only choice you have is whether you want to continue to get, let them do that or try to run a sweep, maybe get outside the corner and get a first down out How of it. How about that bootleg, George? Shrank out of that very well. Or some kind of a rollout with him keeping the football and hoping he can break, you know, get a cutback and maybe... You know, uh, make the first down. Yeah, that's what I was suggesting. Stray, who last week gained more yards rushing than passing, has done a good job this year with that rollout option, although in this case you would instruct him to not throw the ball under any circumstance. Just keep it. Well, they just want to hang on to the football right now. Well, Penn State on first down had a double tight end. Now they've got the two wide outs in there. Second down and nine. Trey will throw to the corner. He's got his first down. The pass complete to Kevin Campbell. And he's got a Penn State first down at the 40. Well, you know, that's what football is all about. Everybody thinks they're going to play conservative. They come out on a sprint out, and Dougie puts it right on the line. Perfect throw, perfect reception. Tremendously big first down, obviously. He did go out of bounds, so it does not force Iowa to use a timeout. But now with a minute 40 to play. Got four more downs, though. That's exactly right. I would expect that Mr. Strang just might sit down on this one. Let's see. Nope, Jim Manoa. Nope. That's the end. Blew him out of bounds. He saved Iowa yet another timeout. Right? Well, that that you don't want. That you do not want. That you got to fool the ball carrier with. He's only you know, an experience. There it is. There Joe, it is. Joe is calling him over, of course, telling him that. That's the, the one thing you don't want to happen. Get up field now. Get up field now. You're not worried about anything else. Don't let the, the, that stroller number 97 ride in the matter about it. So at this point, unless Penn State picks up another first down, they will probably have to punt the ball. Iowa has one timeout left. You can bet they'll run to the wide side of the field this time. Inside and gets to the 44-yard line. Gain of about three. It'll be third down and six. But the clock runs. Iowa apparently will save their timeout until after third down. Well, you know, Penn State, if they have to punt, still have to get a punt off. You, know, you never know what can happen. As they say, as Yogi says, it's never over until it's over, right? Third down and six, the clock now, 102, 101, 
One minute to play in this football game. Here he comes with the rollout again. Yeah. Nope. Mumford. Mumford in the down. open. Mumford. Looking outside. 35. 30. 25. And down to the 21 yard line. And that will do it. Tony Mumford on third and six. Picks up. Big yard at 23 yards for the 21. Right. And Penn State will win. That's all she wrote. Now, that was a great call, but also, I, I think, poor defense. Just a straight draw play. Excellent blocker. Hayden Center did a great job on the nose guard. And this is Humphrey's best run, Mumford's best run of the year. Almost broke it. If he had a little bit more speed, he would have taken it in. 34 seconds, and the clock is running. Now Strang will fall on the football. Tony Mumford finishes with 74 yards and eight carries, substituting for D.J. Dozier. Strang goes down. Iowa still has the one timeout left. They'll have to use it here. Well, they're not even going to bother. I mean, here it is. No, they'll use it now. 17 seconds to play. Penn State will come into Iowa and beat the fifth-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. And Joe Paterno talked before the season that this football team would have to play themselves into becoming a good football team. And they have taken giant strides in doing that today. Well, especially defensively. I mean, they, they should be an awfully tough football uh, team hence on. I mean, they, they, they played a great defensive game against a great offensive football team. I'll tell you, there have been some awfully big wins over the years, certainly at Penn State, and for especially head coach Joe Paterno. But this is an awfully big one today, and it's an awfully tough loss, I'm sure, for Hayden Fry, who we saw on the sideline a minute ago. This will be the last snap, firing a penalty. 17 seconds, Iowa out of timeouts. Strang drops, and that will do it. Nothing more that Iowa can do but watch the clock run out at him. Doug Strang who after a slow first quarter brought this offense along. They all perked up when he perked up, and Joe Paterno has scored a very big win as the Nittany Lions defeat the Iowa Hawkeyes on their home turf. That's the end of the game. The final score, Penn State 20, Iowa 17. We'll be back right after this. We do appreciate the help and cooperation of the fans and students by remaining off of the field at the conclusion of the game. There was no further scoring, and the game ended with a score. Penn State 20, Iowa 17. We'll be back right after this.